NBC Sports and the United States Golf Association are proud to present a national championship. Today it's live final round coverage of the 108th United States Open. Championship Sunday along the magnificent cliffs of Torrey Pines and the South Course which the sun finally lit up late in the day yesterday, just about the time Tiger made that incredible charge. Plenty of blue sky poking through the marine layer early in this afternoon on the West Coast. Record crowds again patrolling the course here. More than 50,000 have jammed in here again today on this Father's Day to see what kind of magic will occur today at the 108th U.S. Open Championship. You heard Bob refer to this Open as just the second daily V course to host a U.S. Open. So how does a two-time champ get ready? Puts his shoes on the, on, on the back bumper of the car just like you would at any municipal golf course. Big day upcoming for young DJ Trahan, just 27 years old. Begins the day four back. And can Sergio Garcia come back from behind? He begins the day at plus three. And what about Rocco Mediate trying to become the oldest U.S. Open champion in history at 45? He's in the second to last group with the guy that put it away at wing foot a couple of years ago, Jeff Ogilvie. And there is Lee Westwood trying for some history. Last European to win this championship, Tony Jacklin back in 1970. And just a moment ago, Tiger Woods arriving and appearing to be okay on that surgically repaired left knee at the moment. But it is going to be a long and trying day. Uh, the south course at Torrey Pines today. Just three players under par through 54 holes. And with that electric eagle yesterday at 18, Tiger Woods has a one-shot lead over Westwood. They're in the final group. They're coming your way in about oh, an hour and 15 minutes or so. Rocco Mediate and Jeff Ogilvy in the second to last group. DJ Trahan and Hunter Mayhan in the third to last group. Camilo Bijegas begins the day five back. And there is Ernie Els who will begin six behind along with Sergio and Mike Weir. So we settle in for what should be another dramatic day here at Torrey Pines. Dan Hicks along with the U.S. Open champion from 1973 whose name is on there somewhere. The <laughs> Lowest final round in major championship history, that's 63, Johnny. And, I mean, this is what it's all about. This is what this day is all about. Happy Father's Day, by the way. You too. And, uh, I mean, it, the, the place still buzzing from what we saw yesterday. Wow. We tried to put it in perspective for you yesterday. You've had a night to sleep on it. Uh, what are your thoughts on what Tiger accomplished yesterday and how he's going to handle this today? Well, you know, the good news uh, it was just the most compelling golf uh, a lot of people back east uh, that maybe weren't any casual golf viewers got to say, hey, you know, that game of golf looks pretty interesting. <laughs> maybe I can do that. But uh, it seemed like a Sunday, to be honest yeah, with you. It, it seemed like the, the championship was over with all that dramatic stuff with the eagle on the last hole by Tiger, uh, you know, to pass Westwood. And uh, But we got another day. And the one thing, uh, I won my U.S. Open with sort of a miracle round. They call it the miracle at Oakmont. Somebody could do a miracle today. The course is playing just 70 to 180 yards, which is way shorter than the 76.43 that was advertised. And so it's out there for the taking if somebody can play a great round of golf and hit a lot of greens. And, uh, and so is that round out there? Yes, it is. Can they do it? I don't know. All right, just a little bit. We're going to show you how the golf course has changed uh, on this championship mm -hmm. Sunday. A little bit about Lee Westwood. If you look at it, you look at his scores this week, he has probably been the steadiest mm -hmm. of all. This guy is very calm, certainly capable of winning the first U.S. Open uh, for Europe since Tony Jacklin pulled it off 38 years ago. You know, he was the number four in the world, and then he dropped into oblivion. Now he's in shape. His putting stroke is maybe the best-looking putting stroke uh, besides Ogilvy's uh, in the field today. Uh, I just think that... Uh, He's, a, he's the only player without a round over par. I mean, he just, he's very solid. I think, and I said it yesterday on the air, that Westwood is the guy Woods has got to really be careful of, especially with Tiger Woods' left knee not being good. The fact that Tiger's only hit half the fairways, that's a, a lot of fairways that he has missed, and he's not hitting that many greens. So Tiger is doing a little bit with smoke and mirrors uh, and just with sheer guts, and really he's winning this championship because of three holes, three eagles he's made. <laughs> Otherwise, he would be back in the pack. It is going to be fun to watch. Our group certainly had an incredible time yesterday bringing it to you. They're out there again. Gary Koch, Bob Murphy 
on the towers here on the south course. Roger Malpe, Mark Rolfing, Dottie Pepper on the ground. We'll be checking in with Jimmy Roberts a little bit later on, handling the interviews and giving us his perspective of this championship. David Bifay with us, the executive director of the USGA. So let's get an idea of how the course is playing. Jim Furyk, the Open champion from 2003, just getting his round started for birdie at the first. So an early roar for Furyk. Who has been runner up in this championship the last two years up ahead at the second. And this just a moment ago, Dan Scott Verplank with his approach shot to the short par four. Verplank birdied the first and then hits this marvelous second shot. So he'll have a tap in birdie there. Chance to start birdie birdie and get to three over par. So we go to six. The long par four and Carl Peterson has it going three under on the day. This one for par though at this converted par five. Nicely done by Peterson. To stay a half dozen shots back. Birdied one, four, and five, Peterson did. Over 13, Phil Mickelson playing a hole that he called terrible pre-tournament. He meant from the back tee, he doesn't like the new back tee, but it was the hole yesterday that cost him. Now watch out, this can go back off the green. Not again, Murph. Oh man, yesterday up and down was Phil Mickelson back into the valley three times. So a lot of people saw that yesterday. <laughs> They're in the grandstands today. Bill keeps it on the green. That was essentially a fortunate the, nine yesterday. Yeah, wow. the death knell of his championship at 13 yesterday, 16. And Stewart Sink on the tee. Five iron, hole 192 yards today. USGA has set the tee markers up on the far left tee. Awkward oh, shot. Oh, Look at this. Sink. Beautifully done. He's already three under par for the round. So, Johnny, as you said, there are some scores out there to be had. Hour 10 minutes or so before Tigers uh, tea time with Lee Westwood in the final group. And out to that beautiful third hole. What a view, huh? Today we're playing the short tee down left and the whole location front left. Very, very dangerous. If you miss it 12 feet to the left, you're going down into the hazard. Scott Verplank, how's that? Birdie, birdie. And he plays a cut, Murph, like you do, and uh, so that's probably be good. Might not get it too close to the hole, but should keep it on ground anyway. Yeah. Downhill holes uh, make you pull the ball. You look at that seventh hole at Pebble, and people hit it left yep. there all the time. Wind is dangerous here too, Johnny. It's blowing right to left across the players. At 137, I would be saying it's probably playing in the neighborhood of 130, and that's way short and trouble. Ouch. You think that might be playable, Murph, or probably not? If he's on the other side of that big bush sticking up, perhaps, yes. What was that? that? mistake. Wow. I don't know. Well, coming into this championship, the USGA told us that there were some 10 holes that they were going to change and vary throughout the championship. And Johnny, let's start with his third, which is uh, short and 137 today. Yeah, we, uh, you know, in all the years I played in this uh, tournament, we never used this tee. And I think it's great with a tough hole location, which is what the USGA gave the guys. You know, you don't want to give an easy hole location with a nine iron wedge, but it's a magnificent looking hole. And it's now shaved in the left, the back, and in the back right, and that's new. And then the 13th hole, par five, you got a tee over to the right, which has been used uh, quite a bit. And today, though, look at what the players have got. And uh, this carry right here is about, you know, 250 to here, and maybe how far, Bob, to the left side there? Maybe like, maybe like 270, uh, 265 on the left side, and the players just can't reach this hole in two. So that brings that uh, Phil Mickelson issue into play with the wedge and uh, sort of short of the green. And then this is probably the biggest change today, folks, that could really make the players have a little jump start to their round if they're just sort of not doing too much up to this point. 
14th hole is uh, up to 267. That's the new tee. It's just been cut there. And from there, guys are knocking on the green. Most of the guys, 22 out of 26 players, uh, just a few minutes ago, have gone for this uh, green in uh, in their tee shot. So it's a narrow opening. Uh, the flag stick is going to be on that right side where those arrows are. You can see right there, players are coming this direction here. So if a guy can cut it, uh, like Stuart Sink hit it like 15 feet from the hole there because he plays a cut. And uh, what the USJ wanted to do is if you hit it short right, you got a really tough shot. And then 18, how's that on the screen for about 20 minutes today? This whole location on the right will lure you into trying to go for it, even if you can't carry the green, because you could play a draw and kick it off this hill here and maybe hit a miraculous shot, even if you're a short hitter. But if you hit the ball here with spin, it'll catch and roll like that. So you got to be really careful on the third shot to keep it a little right of the hole. So 18 is an eagle birdie opportunity, but you might go in the pond. And you look at the scorecard yardage, longest course in major championship history. But again, they've taken some yardage out today, so just 72, That's 80, some 363 yards shorter. Yeah, that's a lot of difference, I'll tell you. That's why I thought maybe somebody might shoot a low one today. To seven. And Carl Peterson, it is second in the bunker. He's three under today, going along nicely. That's a nice bunker shot. How about that spin? Put some spin on that. Wow. We haven't seen a lot of that. And over at 16, Stewart Sink with this birdie opportunity. Chance to go four under for the round. Should go a little left. Ooh, yeah. just sneaks it in. That's five birdies in his round today, just yeah. one bogey. We'll move back over to the short par for second. Jim Furyk with a lengthy putt. This one up the hill to start with, Johnny, and then goes over a ridge right about here and then runs down the hill, moving to the right. Oh, looks good. Looks good. Oh, no. The wiggle left and might have a little high spot there. It did. Unbelievable. But, uh, Gary, it, a little round is possible. The greens are holding well enough. The greens aren't too fast, and the uh, tees are up, so we'll see what happens. Well, should make for a very interesting day. Lee Westwood will be out in the final pairing with Tiger Woods. They go off at 1.30. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're at the third now. Scott Verplank has taken a drop. Playing his third. Little bump up the hill. Oh, that's a good one. That'll be a good save for a bogey there. Over to five. And just a moment ago, Eric Axley has this putt for a birdie. And it was down the hill. And right into the hole. Back to back birdies at four and five moves Eric Axley to three over par for the championship and three under par for his final round. And Johnny, if uh, the scores uh, continue the way they are early on, uh, some of these guys uh, maybe even as far back as two over with a legitimate chance. I agree. Well, you know, if somebody shoots a historical round, yeah. you can come back from four or three over. All right, let's join Bob Costas. All right, and we are joined as we are at each of these U.S. Open Saturdays and Sundays by Tim Rosefort, senior writer of Golf World magazine. And let's go right to the top of the leaderboard for your first story, and that is the condition of Tiger Woods and that surgically repaired left knee. Well, coming down the stretch yesterday, Bob, Mike Davis, who sets the golf course up for the USGA, approached Tiger and asked him if he needed five minutes. Tiger said it wouldn't matter. That's how kind of what kind of pain he was in. You notice how long he meditated before that tee shot at 18. Talking to Hank Haney this morning, that was because he knew he had to hit almost a 50-yard cut to get it in play. To hit that cut, he had to put all that pressure on that left knee. Steve Williams in the parking lot last night told me that of all the rounds he's seen Tiger play, from where he hit it, where where he hit it to shoot under par in an open had to be his greatest round ever, especially essentially because he was only doing it on one knee. And Hank this morning said, considering where Tiger was from, he was able to pull this through. And again, Tiger in his room this morning, just air swinging, working out with Keith Clevin because he can't hit that many balls before he goes off would be his greatest accomplishment ever. Now to be in the final pairing with Tiger, even though it means you've got 
at least mathematically, a very good shot at the championship. To be in that final pairing with Tiger is not the most comfortable thing in the world. That's Lee Westwood's circumstance. But in terms of comforts in every other way, he's pretty much set it up the way he wants it here. Well, he really has. He's just staying up in Del Mar with his agent, Chubby Chandler. They've got an English chef. They're hanging out watching all the English wait, wait, sports. Wait, hold, hold on. I know. I, you know, I, I don't mean to be impertinent. And there are many fine things you can say about jolly old England. But to import an English chef, what, what does he say? More shepherd's pie, Mr. Westwood? Would you like your bangers and mash over easy? I don't understand. I don't know where to go with that, Bob, but I do know where to go. All right, with continue this. with wherever you were going. <laughs> He's been texting Darren Clark. And, you know, Darren and he are mates. They, they team up in a Ryder Cup. They actually beat Tiger and Duval at the country club. And Lee actually took out Tiger, not paired in the same group with him at the Deutsche Bank a couple of years ago. But Darren, just up the I-5 here, was one of the guys who did take out Tiger head-to-head -head in the Accenture match play. So you can imagine they've been sharing text messages and voicemails all week long for what it takes to beat Tiger in this situation. Everybody from Butch Harmon down says this man is going to be tough to beat today. Everybody likes Rocco Mediate. Hard not to root for him, and he's got some moral support here as well. He does. Lee Jansen, a two-time Open champion, just talked to him. He's on a putting green here out to practice on a charter tonight to Hartford and wants to be here for Rocco. You know, Lee won two U.S. Open titles. Rocco was there for the first one when he finished at Baltus Raw. When, when Lee won again at the Olympic Club, Rocco was the first guy to get the call. So I asked, Rocco, I asked Lee in the putting green today what kind of communication he said. He sent a text to Rocco. He just told him, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be Rocco. All right, Tim, thanks very much. We'll check with you later. Back out to three. And Jim Furyk now. With a nine iron, downhill wind in their face. It's a, not a comfortable shot by any means, hitting it downhill this much. Gets it right behind the hole. That's good. That's safe. Jim Furyk known for exactly that, isn't he? He's going to put the ball in play, keep it in play, and make a few here and there. Reigning British Open champion Padraig Harrington for birdie at. 15 long attempt plus 11 not having the greatest championship but that was a beauty. Harrington kind of gears his whole schedule around these major championships and can't wait to try to get the next one but not going to happen here that birdie just a moment ago at 15. This also a moment ago at the first Brant Joe tough. beginning his day at plus four tough stance makes you hook the ball see if he plays for it looks like he's playing a draw. Wow. So a birdie start for Job, who gets it immediately to plus three. And up ahead at 15, Mickelson from 196. Well, nobody prepared more than Phil. In fact, if you ask me, um, I would say as much as he is sort of yes. an interpretive, creative, spontaneous player, preparation and Phil aren't always compatible. I think sometimes it'd be better if he just showed up and played a little, not so many things going on in his head. He knows in the prime of his career, this was a golden opportunity to win a U.S. Open championship in his backyard. A look at his card. All pars and a lone birdie there on the front. And a bogey at 12. He would have traded any tournament championship he's ever won for this one. He wanted it so bad. It'll be his last shot at Torrey Fines, I think. All right, so Tiger Woods sitting on top as we await his tee time less than an hour away and as we get you back out to the course and the amateur Michael Thompson for birdie at the 11th just three amateurs made the cut of the 11 who started on Thursday and Thompson that runner up at the U.S. Amateur last year at Olympic Club has been so impressive and continuing to play well today one under on his round and on his way to being low amateur. And here are a couple of highlights from the other two to make it. Derek Fathauer, who was in that U.S. Amateur last year from Florida in the Palm Beach area, 75 for Derek, plus 15 for the championship. And he was playing with a 19-year-old amateur from Oklahoma State, Ricky Fowler, who's from this area just down the coast. And how about the finish for Fowler, who was not only the freshman of the year, but the collegiate player of the year, finishing birdie, birdie. He had that first round 70, which had many thinking he perhaps could make a run in this championship, but some fine, fine play by the three amateurs who made the cut in his 108th 
U.S. Open. And over to Phil Mickelson for a birdie attempt at 15. This is for back to back birdies. And Mickelson with a nice little run here. And the midway point of his closing nine. And Mickelson would have liked to have celebrated his 38th birthday tomorrow with a U.S. Open championship in his backyard, but not to be. Over to three. And the 03 U.S. Open champion. And how did he do it? Just like this. Put it on the green, and by George, you can make them from 25, 30 feet. That just a moment ago, of course. And that gets Jim to plus three. Plus three, it's doable. This was a moment ago. Heath Slocum, who's working on a five under round today, his third shot to this par five. Nice swing, beautiful tempo. And that looks great. And that, folks, that'll be the round of the championship. Is a bogey free round of the championship. 65 for Slocum. So there are some low numbers out there for Tiger and Company to maybe keep an eye on. Tiger just a little more than 45 minutes away from beginning what should be another interesting uh, quest for a major championship. Slocum for his round of the championship of 65. Yeah, that'll move him up the board, won't it? Plus four. What kind of number do you think Johnny posted early here might give someone a chance? I think they've got to get to three under. Okay. And here at the second, Rand Job has this birdie putt to start. Birdie, birdie, and get the two over. So a 42 year old. Most of his 11th appearance in the U.S. Open Championship. Out to the second. And Brant Snedeker with this birdie opportunity. Turning to his left. Playing along with uh, Brant Job. So both players birdie the second hole. That moves Brant Snedeker to three over par for the championship. Up at 18. This was a moment ago, Retief Goosen, and to give you an idea of what can happen here at 18. Playing a nice high little soft draw. Yeah, yeah, that'd work. <laughs> Eagles very much in the realm of possibility here at Torrey Pines. Now where Jim wants it here at the tough fourth hole. Oh, he hit it really thin. Maybe that'll run up that opening. Yeah, he, that ball was hit two or three grooves down from the sweet spot. Well, Lee Westwood seemingly relaxed. There's his agent Chubby Chandler in the background. And uh, just a short time ago, Roger Mulpey had a chance to catch up with the Englishman. Lee, you're one of the few guys that actually came from behind, caught Tiger, and beat him in 2000 in the Deutsche Bank Open. Does that give you the confidence that I've done it, I can do it? Yeah, well, it's uh, obviously nice to have done it before. And uh, I think basically you just have to go out there and try and just play your own game, and uh, that's all you can do and see if that's good enough. You're, you're, you're playing with the guy you have to beat, do you think? And is that good, bad, or what is it? Well, it's good to have a close close eye on him, see what he's doing. Um, I think uh, you know we all pretty much accept at the end of the day that he's going to be there or thereabouts. Um, I did at the start of the week, so uh, um, to be playing with him in the last group's a bonus. Obviously, it means I've played well. Thanks for your time and good luck to you today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Roger. A little tail of the tape here through the first uh, three rounds between Tiger and Lee and those Eagles, as you mentioned, Johnny, mm -hmm. huge in Tiger's uh, line over there. Tiger's been much more volatile. Look at Lee Westwood's line. That's much more like a U.S. Open type of scorecard. Yeah, it is. Uh, Lee's played with Tiger uh, ten times uh, in a major. He's one of the few players who have outplayed him head-to-head -head in majors. He has a scoring average of 71.4. Tiger 72.2. So when they're together, so that's that's pretty impressive. Well, let's get you back out to the fourth and the third at the par four for Furyk. Has birdie two of the first three holes. We've seen a 65 recorded already today by Slocum. And it appears that Furick is going to stay at plus three. Well, 
also a moment ago. Trevor Immelman, the Masters champ, his second, coming up way short on this par three. Well, he's in a good spot. Short of the green at the U.S. Opens is terrific. That ball kind of was going in, but really curled at the end. Well, over at the first, lefty Mike Weir has begun his round, and he's already way off the course here, Mark. Yeah, he is 50 yards off the course. Did have a shot, though, actually. That's a great break, wasn't it, Mark? Yeah, he was uh, all the way right of the tree that's left of number six. We'll keep it right here for Sergio Garcia, who again began this championship on Thursday, plus six through the first seven holes. Yeah, he's had trouble with the beginning of the round, Dan, actually pretty much all three days. Good tee shot here, though, just 149. And with the wind blowing, I'd say 10 miles an hour at the most, this first hole can be a birdie hole right now. Since that tough start, Sergio is three under since. Again, like the Players Championship was number one in Green's hit. Uh, this championship, he's number two in Green's hit. So his ball striking is there. If he putted well, he would be beating Tiger. And to put it in perspective, Johnny, you said three under might look pretty good. That means Garcia would have to shoot a 65. And it has been done already today by Heath Slocum, who turned in the lowest round of the U.S. Open since VJ Singh 63 five years ago at Olympia Fields. And we're back to Torrey Pines in a moment. Four decades ago, Lee Trevino at the age of 28 completed one of the greatest rags to riches stories in golf, winning this championship at Oak Hill. After he finished fifth as a qualifier the previous year, Trevino won by four over Jack Nicholas to become the first player in U.S. Open history to shoot all four rounds in the 60s. That was the first of six major titles for Lee. He won another U.S. Open at Marion three years later in a playoff over Nicholas. At the first here at Torrey Pines, Mike Weir trying to get off to a birdie start with a big swing and left to right putt. This would be quite the birdie where he drove it, but slow but good speed. That was quick. Still trickling. Over to 18, the third for Stuart Sink. He's having a good round. Four under on his round as he comes to this par five. Getting a little bit of hand action at the bottom, playing a little draw. And, uh, not the greatest shot, but putting. That's got a pretty big left right swing from there. Interesting pairing, Sink and Goosen together again. Remember the history at Southern Hills. Yes, sir. Over at the first, Garcia for birdie. And another very quick putt here. Johnny, I have the sense these greens may be just a little bit faster today. They obviously aren't so fast that people aren't shooting the best rounds of the week, though. You know and what I'm saying with the yardage up and uh, they're still holding. What script will be written today and Tiger going through the uh, last few swings about a half hour away or so. We go out to the third again for any else. 37 yards today. Most players are favoring right of the hole. Ernie's hitting a pitching wedge. Not bad, should draw back a little bit. Not a necessarily an easy putt, a little bit of a mound to deal with there. Up to 18. Sink has made par here, Retief Goosen for Eagle. Not a lot of break right here, just a little bit to the right. Nice read, Retief. Good round. 67 for the Goose. Good round. Over at 17, Mickelson with a nice par save. Drove it in the rough once again. Unable to reach the green. Good pitch from about 70 yards. So Mickelson will remain at seven over par for the championship, but two under par in this final round. The anticipation builds the final pair of Woods and Westwood. We're getting closer. Stay with us.
And it is amazing how true those uh, words ring today from his late father, Earl. And uh, he's going to have to uh, rely on some of those great lessons that uh, Earl taught him. Be tough and persevere. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why Tiger is where he is today, his father. His father was a genius in a lot of ways. But a father's affirmation of failure or greatness or I'm disappointing, disappointed in you or you're going to be the toughest guy and then back it up with action is the strongest thing a boy will ever hear. So father has a lot of power of uh, how a child turns out, especially his son. I know your father used to call you champ and, yeah. uh, and that, uh, that it made helped. you, it helped you into the player that uh, you ended up becoming. So nothing like a, a parent's love and support. And Tiger will also tell you that his mother, Coltita, has been so huge and influential mm -hmm. in his personal life, his spiritual life, as he gets some last uh, words there with Hank Haney and, of course, his caddy, Steve Williams. It's going to be an interesting day to watch the world's number one. Out to second. And Sergio Garcia from 125 yards. Looks like he was trying to max out a sand wedge, Johnny. That should have a lot of spin on it. Will it stay? Yes, okay. Still swinging well as usual on yes, here. Yes, he is. Striking the ball beautifully. It's just a matter if he can make enough putts as we go to seven. And Stuart Appleby. His second shot at the par four. That's Whole location day. today, Johnny, tucked over on that left side. What a day yesterday, huh, Murph? Yeah, tough day for Stewart. The 36-hole leader of this championship, Stuart Appleby, when that uh, putting stroke just abandoned him, Murph, huh? Did it ever. And the short ones, the short ones just kill you mentally. They just kill you. And back over the second. We're from just four yards closer. One of the best wedge players. Yeah, wonderful little short accelerating motion. Uh, uh, gets the big hop and then stops. So Mike Weir with a very makeable putt for a birdie chance to get to two over. Back out to the third. And Ernie Els for par. He had it about 20 feet in back of the hole and misread it coming over that bit of a mound there in back of the hole. So Ernie remains three over. He said, I don't understand. I should be playing better than I am. All right, at the second, Sergio Garcia with. Uh, very makeable birdie putt, Johnny. It's uh, kind of right on top of this little ridge that kind of cuts the green into about three different sections. Well, this is, uh, well, today will probably be the second easiest par four. I would think that uh, number 14 that's been moved up to 267 will be the easiest. I would agree. And 10 will be maybe the third easiest. So, so far, Johnny, it's playing to a stroke average of about 3.8. So uh, second or third easiest hole on the golf course right now. So we'll move to his right. Well, never got it high enough. That's got a yeah, tough well, second putt. That's a, a terrible putt. Players putt. misjudging the speed there. I, I think uh, not taking into consideration the fact the ball moving toward the ocean as we go to seven. And Stuart Appleby for a birdie. He's three over again today. He knocks that one in nicely. And we didn't see that firmness yesterday in those short ones, so. Tough to play with we, the lead, Murph. Yeah, the older we get, the more we get experience. All right, back at the second, Mike Weir. I think experience is only good when it's good experience, personally. I'm not. <laughs> Well, the stuff about saying, oh, well, I learned from that 84 today. You don't learn anything except for the fact that you gag. Well, that you <laughs> need to learn how to forget it somehow, Johnny. And I think uh, your top players are able to do that. And the guys who maybe struggle don't. Not a lot of break here. This is just a pure putting stroke, isn't it, Johnny? This is one the folks at home need to copy. Keeps the blade low to the ground. Oh. Have a push there, though. Back to the first. Camilo Bijegas just getting underway. Plus two begins the day. Five back his second. Young Colombian has yet to win on the PGA Tour. Let's see what kind of number he can put up. But off to the left in the very first hole. Well, even though he's hearing a great applause in his ears, this is not the time of day that Phil Mickelson wanted to walk up 
at Torrey Pines on a golf course where he played high school matches on, won a junior world title on. But nevertheless, they appreciate Phil Mickelson in the San Diego area who just lives 15 minutes or so down the road in Rancho Santa Fe. And this was Mickelson's second shot from 215 to this uh, par 5 18th. So we're going to see among Phil's eagle attempt, a lot of eagle attempts should get the feeling. And even though uh, Mickelson uh, is going to come up short in this U.S. Open, Johnny, that leads us to our mailbag question for you. Those of you who have logged on to NBCSports.com to pose Johnny a question, we have the winner here, and it's Lars Hoel from New York. And his question to you, Johnny, is which golfing legend who never won a U.S. Open do you feel most deserve to? Well, I'm going to break it into errors a little bit. Just uh, two, two players, Sam Snead, who won the most uh, PGA Tour events of anybody in history, a good friend of mine. I roomed with him at the British Open that I won, uh, won 82 times and came close so many times at the Open, had so many chances, never won. But in the modern era, you know, you guys know him real well. He lives right here. Right uh, behind us out here. Just <laughs> Phil Mickelson. You remember it started at Pinehurst, uh, and uh, that was a great Open, and then Beth Page, then Shinnecock, and then, of course, the crazy de debacle at uh, Wingfoot. So, uh, there's Phil right here, uh, and uh, you know you got a feel for Phil, and he wanted this one worse than any event he's ever teed it up in, and it just didn't happen. That little three wood that he tried to use didn't work. And he had the crazy uh, 13th hole that killed him with a nine there. So both the players you mentioned, Johnny Sneed and Mickelson, with four runner-ups in this championship, and they had that list of players with most PGA Tour wins without. A U.S. Open championship. So I guess I answered it all right. I think so. <laughs> Vijegas for par at the first. Remember, he hit it in that bunker left of the green. A very fast putt. And Vijegas. That's a tough putt. Stays at plus two. Five behind. Up ahead to three. Sergio Garcia's tee shot. Got to be careful, Murph. Pitching wedge. Got to be careful. Uh -oh. He said left, Johnny. I had a feeling. I just thought his ball flight. Got to watch out. Oh, my. Yeah. No good. Well, that maybe one and four can play it from there. And Phil Mickelson for a birdie, which will conclude this 108th U.S. Open Championship for him. Grew up with his folks who. Put a practice green in his backyard. That's where the dream began. And Mickelson, who got so excited when he first heard that this championship was coming to Torrey Pines, is going to come up short. Played with Tiger in that incredible pairing with Adam Scott and Tiger in the first two days, Thursday and Friday. So much hoopla hung in there after the first round and was still in it after Friday's 75. But how about the finish for Mickelson? Three birdies in the final five holes. Yeah, the problem was just about just over four hours too early. And Augusta, Georgia's Larry Mize will remain the last player to win a major in his hometown. That coming at that dramatic 1987 Masters. Well, let's uh, get an idea of how Tiger's been warming up. For that, we go to Dottie. Thanks, Dan. Tiger's warm up I think was very efficient very normal I um, went through the normal amount of shots the normal shot shapes that we noticed that he has done over these last three days of the championship but I thought the really cool thing was that he took out the whole location she looked on the holes that were for the back nine and went specifically through those shots to set up the tee shots that were necessary he hit his chip shots finished out the round and went back and hit one last driver the driver he's going to need at the first it's a normally trajectory driver but it's going to be shaped from right to left back to you guys. Thank you, Donnie. And uh, we heard from Hank Haney earlier, or at least we heard reports, that the shot that hurts Tiger the most is the cut shot. Yeah, but it's also the shot that he hits the straightest. And uh, the hooks, when he's hooking it, Tiger's just another player. I'm telling you, if he's going to play a hook, I don't like it. But I do like the fact that he went through his, uh, the whole uh, back nine like Ben Hogan used to and go hold a hole and hit the shot that's required. And here's that one of those one out of four Murphs that you can play. The second he caught it thin and it's wow what a way shot. back over the green. He'll be playing three from there so. 
He did that move that he did at the PGA that made him famous. It looked like he closed <laughs> his eyes and lifted his head, but it didn't work this time. All right, DJ Trahan not off to a good start. Had to punch out to this position, so his third to the opening par four. Trahan begins four behind. Not the start he wanted. That leaves him a big slider to the right. He's in that third to last group with Hunter Mahan. And over to Luke Donald at the 12th with his third to this 504 yard par four. And yes, these fairways, folks, if you haven't tuned in this week, are as good as they look. If you can't hit the irons close off these lies, you should stay home. I mean, it's like hitting off a bristle brush. Donald's going to save par, remain a plus seven. And over at the fourth, Ernie Els is second. He has parred the first three holes to remain six back. A little thin, a little thin. Will it run up there? Yes, I think it will. It was thin to win. Nice. Beautiful shot just a moment ago. So a chance to get it to plus two within five of Tiger's lead. Not a hard putt. Saw this whole location on Thursday, didn't we? Oh. Oh. Uh, not a good putt at all, but that's an easy hole location. So Ernie should begin with four straight pars and over at the third. Sergio's third now on the par three. Hard shot here up and on to that back plateau over there. Front actually on the hole as it sits, but that left for a four. All right, playing with Trahan over there at the first. Hunter Mahan's third is now behind him. How about that shot? Final two groups getting ready to take aim at Torrey Pines, and we head to the tee at one. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 1.20 starting time. From Melbourne, Australia, the 2006 United States Open champion, Jeff Ogilvie. to last pairing where he was at Wingfoot, but uh, this time he begins four back, not one back when he won that 2006 U.S. Open. You know, it's amazing. This fellow is one over par, and he has missed 27 greens in regulation. I mean, you talk about scoring with how you're hitting it. This one's down the left hand side and just it continues Mark just probably going to chop it out there and probably make another tough par. He's just it's got to catch up with you though Mark. That's and from Naples Florida Rocco Mediate. Rocco the happy go lucky 45 year old who was tied for the lead on the back nine at Southern Hills in the 01 championship. Still looking for the first major hasn't won in six years. Plays his little draw. To two thirds of the fairways and two thirds of the greens. And another one right here. He's the most balanced player in the field. As far as hitting fairways and greens. And Rocco is in the fairway on the most difficult fairway to hit the first three days. So just one group left to go off here and that's Lee and Tiger up ahead. Trahan for his par. There's that big slider I was talking about. Odds of making this are about one in ten. Good try. And Trahan's going to lose at least one from the start. Let's go back over to Bob. All right, Dan, and we're joined by two-time Open champion Curtis Strange and Peter Jacobson, who won the Buick here at Torrey Pines. A little reading for you, How I Play Golf by Tiger Woods. And if you turn to page 173, he says, For more yards, I snap my left leg. Let's take a look. My left knee, actually, he says, For more yards, I snap my left leg. There you go. Now let's get to the excerpt that we're interested in after the artistic pan across the page. When I need an exercise, I found that by snapping my left leg straight, my hips clear faster and speed up the movement of my shoulders, arms, and legs. This is an unorthodox move meant solely for power. Okay, so how does the fact that his left knee has only recently been surgically repaired, how does that compromise that? 
Well, it just takes all the force and all the strength and all the torque. When he goes to the left knee, yes, it creates speed, but there's a tremendous amount of pressure and if he has problems, a tremendous amount of pain. Peter, you would know about that having knee problems. Yeah, that's the one thing that happens. I think when you have a bad left knee, you have a tendency to slide a little bit. And I think Tiger wants to pop that left leg so he can get mm -hmm. his hips turned and he gets tremendous power and he's got great power off the tee. But I think there's some uncertainty going on right now. Is that the right thing to do, especially as he gets ready to tee off today? All right, so how I play golf by Tiger Woods and after you've poured through this I suggest you pick up How I Compose a Symphony by Ludwig von Beethoven and you'll have exactly the same <laughs> chance of achieving the standard of the author. All right what about the pain just simply gritting your teeth through the pain. It's going to be tough today. He is in pain. I talked to Mike, Mark Steinberg earlier, his agent. He is in pain the first three days. It's been the toughest three days he's ever played. Today, I think, might be the toughest Sunday he has ever played. Folks, I have been fortunate to win this Open Championship twice. I thought I could do it the year after that in 90. I thought I could do it in 94. The pressure is enormous. You think it's tough the first three days. It is magnified tenfold today. For Tiger Woods to win, he has to play well. He has to perform. He's playing under the intense pressure. He's playing with the field. He's playing a tough golf course. But the one added part of the equation today, he's playing with a lot of pain. What about his first hole jitters? It's hard to imagine that Tiger would experience jitters, but he doubled the first, which was his first hole on Thursday. He bogeyed the 10th, where he began on Friday. Then he went back with another six at number one yesterday. Well, that definitely plays into his mind because when you're hurt, as Curtis said, and you've got pain, you've got the uncertainty, you don't really know what's gonna happen. So what he's hoping to do is put that ball in play. If you can do that on the first couple holes and maybe the first three or four here, he's going to get off to a good start and he's going to calm down and it's going to help him quite a bit. They've been trying all week to figure out, he and Hank Haney, how to create less pressure on the leg. But it's almost impossible because it's a golf swing. It's a weight shift. You can't keep your weight mm -hmm. off that left knee. Let's talk about Lee Westwood. Uh, Tiger has had the, the double bogeys. He had a couple of eagles on the back nine yesterday. The spectacular chip in for birdie at 17. Westwood just kind of cruising along consistently. Well, the one, the one thing you cannot have in a U.S. Open if you want to have a chance to win is inconsistency. And here's a here's a, a, a graphic description here. Look at Tiger. He's had three eagles, ten birdies, seven bogeys, three doubles. But look how consistent Lee Westwood is. He's kind of plodding along. Remember when uh, Nick Faldo won the British Open? Mm -hmm. He made he made uh, 18 pars on the final day to beat Paul Easinger. Consistency is important, and I'm I'm not going to predict one thing or another, but those bad shots, they do catch up with you. I like the way he plays. He plays our game. Yeah. In the fairway on plays the green. Plays your game. Well, I don't, I, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a copy of How I Play Golf by Lee Westwood. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I like that. I'm going to read it. Let's go to one. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. And Rocco Mediate on the left side of the fairway there with 171 left. Not the greatest hole location for his hook, but should be able to get it on the green, no problem. Tried to be a little aggressive there. Should have just taken his par and get out of here. This is a tough hole. All right, so now Ogilvy from the rough. Let's get one of those Australian lies down under. And he is short sighted himself, and that better sit up than it does, but still no green to work with. That's probably a bogey. So the next to last group having problems at the first. It's been a tough start for most of the field. One more pair to get out. Woods and Westwood when we come back. Tiger Woods is the 100th U.S. Open champion in history. Well, it's not too bad a Father's Day present, is it? For more than 40 years, it's been a U.S. Open ritual. The final day is Father's Day. Tiger and his late father, Earl, had their own U.S. Open ritual. Dad and I used to always play in the morning, and we'd tee off sometime around 7 over there at Navy Golf Course, and then we'd play a quick round of 18 and, and get back to, to watch the first tee start of, of the final groups and the buildup of the U.S. Open. Now he is the focus of that buildup. Thanks to his stunning performance yesterday, now a father himself, Tiger Woods shoots for another U.S. Open championship on Father's Day. 
You know, when Tiger enters the final round of a major with the lead, there's a sense of inevitability. To counter that, we can offer this. The undefeated Patriots didn't win the Super Bowl. And as Jimmy Roberts mentioned just a moment ago, the undefeated Big Brown didn't win the Belmont. Tiger Woods undefeated in circumstances like these entering the final round of a major with the 54 hole lead is visibly hobbled by his injured knee. Does that open the door for Westwood and the rest? We're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 1.30 starting time. From Worksop, England, Lee Westwood. Play away, please. He has been calm all week long. Everybody around him says there's a uh, certain calmness to him, but uh, Westwood is in a position unlike any he has ever been in his entire career. He has won dozens of tournaments worldwide, but in the final group, with Tiger Woods looking for his first major championship and the first for a European since 1970. And this is a very important shot to hit the fairway for confidence. Ball starts right and is not turning. This will miss right, way right. He made a huge lead with the handle coming down and just could not release it in time. Just a sort of a pull without any release. And from Windermere, Florida, Tiger Woods. You see the final round scoring average with a 54 hole lead in a major. This the first Father's Day for Tiger Woods as a father himself. His little girl Sam Alexis will turn one on Wednesday and uh, daddy would love to bring another U.S. Open trophy home to show it to her. Uh, a little gallery noise there. I think on 18, a great shot. Maybe it was hit there, but he knows when to back off. A lot of times he doesn't hear that stuff, but he's got a little something in his eye, left eye, too. I'd like to see him hit a cut here like he did at 18 yesterday, but I think he's going to maybe go with the draw. I don't know. It looks like a sort of a cut setup. Left to left again. That's three times this week he hit the big pull hook here. Better get it a good break here, otherwise that rough is really tough. And he's out with the gallery, and that's just whether or not he gets lucky with the trees, and he might be just fine. Tiger may be off to another difficult start like he's had in the first three days. And let's take a look at the swing and see how uh, it's looking. I, I don't know if he changes mind. We've got the ball well forward in the stance for him. You'd think he was going to play down the left side and cut it. Watch him come down. He's in good shape there. Good shape. And you see him turn down real early that left hand. And um, I think it might have been a double cross. Maybe the knee. I don't know. It looked like he was aiming in the left edge of the rough and cutting it and hooked it. While Tiger was teeing off. Up ahead was Ogilvy's third to this par four. Short side of the green here he's staring at. Better be careful. Just lands it in the rough, and Ogilvy yeah. went on to save his par. That was a one in ten shot. That was almost an accident. Nobody could try to land that short of the green. The guy is amazing. If he wins this open, it's going to be amazing with how many greens he's missed. All right. And Rocco mediates third from that bunker just in front. And Rocco also went on to save par. So a couple of cool U.S. Open types of saves there for Mediate and Ogilvy. And over at three, Robert Carlson for birdie. Sergio made double bogey in front of Robert. Taps it in. Nice putt. Goes to one over par. Should have had you catting for me, Murph, calling that a tap in. <laughs> <laughs> he said yesterday playing with Tiger was electric. And over at the fifth, Ernie Els for a birdie, chance to get the two over. Oh, that's a better stroke, better speed there. Nicely done. Els only made one birdie in 18 holes yesterday. That was on number 18, so a little better start for him. Well, 
Johnny, what do you think? Uh, still plenty of guys there with a chance. Yeah, except for Tiger usually shoots under par on <laughs> Sunday with the lead. But uh, with the knee, you know, we have really got an interesting championship because uh, Tiger's probably going to hit it all over the lot. I think, I don't care how much the knee hurts, I think he should go with that cut. I think he can hit the cut, the big cut, and uh, put it in play. And if he does that, he'll win. It's got to be intimidating, though, Gary, when everybody knows, every player knows he's 13 and 0 with the lead. But then again, you could say, hey, what have I got to lose? Well, that's very true, too. As we go to the second, and Jay Trahan for a par raced his birdie putt way by the hole, and that's a pull. That's a similar stroke to what uh, we saw at 18 yesterday. So, not a good start for DJ Trahan. Bogey's at one end, too. And we'll go back to the first. Okay, Roger, where has Tiger ended up? Well, as we saw yesterday many times, outside the really penal areas of rough in the area where the gallery has walked and has an alleyway, has a wide open alleyway at the hole. So why is he kicking his bag? Well, he kicked it with his right leg. And because of that, that is just in a little nest there. What does he expect over there to be teed up? Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Well, I think he's upset with the shot, Johnny, but it's yeah. certainly not as bad as it would be if it was in the second cut of primary rough. Or behind a tree. Correct. I mean, I would think, you know, it's no bargain, but uh, when you miss it that far, you got to know that there's a great chance you're going to have something you don't like. And again, the USGA has instituted this graduated rough, which the farther you get offline, the deeper stuff you get into, but Tiger's gone so far out. Well, the advantage Tiger has is the fact that he's just so strong. You know, of course, he has the knee thing, but if he keeps hitting in this hay, which he hit at the whole back nine, basically, except for the short tenth and the cut shot he hit at 18, it just, you know, makes the leg worse and worse and worse as the day goes on because you got to hit with such force to get it out of this rough, Raj. It's not like you can hit a little half shot with just an arm. You know how you can hit a seven iron and just arm it up there? You can't arm it up there with this. you got to use your body. Well, that's true. And he also swings, I think, at a much more relaxed tempo, say, on the driving range warming up than he does once the round begins. I agree. All right, get Tiger second in a moment. Back over to three. And Hunter Mayhan and Dottie Pepper, you're there. Hunter taking it very high, just right of the hole. Stops it right there, just about a foot to the right. That ball goes down 15 feet to the right. That was the perfect shot, wasn't it? Yes, Murph? it was. And back to Tiger now. What's he doing there? He's still looking around like. He's looking around for a place to. That's interesting there, what he was doing. I, I've never seen him do that. He's sort of wandering around like. Well, we'll see what we got here. Got a good angle uh, to go into the right hole location, but. Roger, are you handy or where are you? Well, I'm up ahead of him, Johnny, about uh, 40, 50 yards, trying to peek back across the people that have encroached on his line. It's got a lot of grass between the club, I mean, the ball. He's got to go through that grass. This ball's come out straight left, mm. hits a tree, and kicks left again. What starts he's had to his rounds this week, the worst of his career. Double. It's amazing he's leading it. Two bogeys and a par in the first three holes in round two, and a double bogey in his first hole yesterday. He's holding the club above the ground like Jack Nicholas would do, so the ball won't roll. And he drives into it and just turns the club right over. That was one of the worst shots I've ever seen Tiger hit, actually. Maybe he just wants to improve on the script from yesterday. I don't know. We'll I don't think he wants we'll those two shots. We'll find out. Westwood on the other side, out of the rough with his second. Pretty good lie, really, for where he is. That's 163 yards, Johnny. That angle, You've got a tree there trying to cut it off a uphill lie. It's tough to do. Oh man, how oh, about that? It's a spectator. That's actually a good break right there because that would have gone right and would have kicked right and rolled right. That thing would have been over by that tree, past the tree, but way over there to the right. And that is dead. No, no green to work with. Up ahead to two. And Rocco Media, 827 yard pitching wedge. Rocco could see the group behind him, he'd be saying, hmm. Well, he may be saying, hmm, anyway, Johnny, look at this. Sticks it in there about four or five feet. <laughs> hey, he is the people's choice. Yes, he is. He was asked how come people like him so much. He said, well, I'm just a normal guy with a little bit of a crazy side. Common right. man with a common van. 
Dog ain't got no pedigree. <laughs> Phil Mickelson completed his round just a short time ago, and uh, Jimmy Roberts had a chance to catch up with the local man. All right, Phil, three birdies in your last five holes. By the way, happy Father's Day, first of all. Give us a sense of uh, the strategic issues out there. What are we going to see on this back nine coming in? What should we look at? Well, Jimmy, first of all, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. But second, the USGA did the best job it's ever done in setting this golf course up where it's fair. And today, the pin placements are such that you can make a lot of birdies. They are not, out, they are not in the hardest spots all the time. There are spots where you can get at it. I think there's a 65 or 6 out there if you play great golf. I think that guys that are at 3, 2, 1 over par have a chance to get back in this tournament with uh, some good play. It's not an impossible, uh, out of the realm possibility idea to shoot a 5 or 600 par around out there. We know how important this championship is to you, especially this year. You said this year was the opportunity of a lifetime. When you look back on this week, what will you think about? I think that as I look back, I, I am so proud to be from San Diego and to have this open championship here at Torrey Pines. And the golf course was, again, I think the best, fairest setup it's ever been. The mixture of tee boxes, the pin placements were all perfect to give the best players a chance to separate themselves. I'm disappointed I didn't play well, but I'm not disappointed in the way this championship is shaping into form and the way that uh, San Diego has been presented. This has been awesome. All right, Phil, thanks so much for stopping by, and I know you're looking forward to Beth Page next year. I am. Thanks, Jimmy. Last time the Open was at Beth Page, uh, Tiger won it, but he is off to a rough start, to say the least. Well, I'm not, does he have a shot, Rog? Yes, he's got an opening, oh, John. He does. He has 93 Please. yards to the hole, and he does have overhanging limbs from a tree ahead of him to the right, but he will have to keep the ball underneath, and he will have to land the ball short of the green and try to chase it on, but he does have a shot. He has an angle. He better make it past that first cut, huh? Everybody's exactly. He's got to carry it across that first cut and land it into the fairway and then let it run. A lot of shaft angle. Got the ball back in his stance. He'll pick it up quick and hit down on it. Oh, he got it up too quick, hit the tree. Can you believe this, Roger? Have you ever seen it's a just, like just this No, I never have. He, this first hole is just giving him fits all week. Yeah, but this is another notch worse than the other days. Let's watch this. There's his limbs there. He tries to keep it down, but it hits it. Look at it. Well, it's just right into the tree. That thing was just not hit where he wanted it. But the problem was he had to carry over all that rough. So he had to take a chance and just skimming the pine needles and it popped up on him. I mean, this is quite a situation because he's probably not going to get this too close to the hole. Uh, so. Fourth shot. Look at him. Hack at that. And look at he that. He is still not going to be on the green. This That's where he wanted to end up on the last shot, but he's lying four there. I've never seen him play a hole like this in his whole career. They try to get it up and down there for double over to two. And Rocco mediate for Bernie to get to two under par. He may be in the lead in a minute, Gary. This is a right edge putt. Yes, sir. Good start for Rocco. And the fans love him. He's going to be pretty shocked when he sees the leaderboard next time and saying, whoa, what's going on back there? At the three. Hunter Mahan for a birdie who said yesterday, I have a good feel on these greens. A little ocean pull got him there. Back to one. And now Westwood, Roger. Oh, man, what a shot. Roger's Roger. getting a workout on the first hole. These guys are killing me. Is this ball sitting up all right or is it in the dirt? Yeah, it's in the dirt. It really is kind of dirt. It's about a 40 yard pitch across a bunker with no green to work with. Well, here. You could chunk this so easily. Oh, what a shot. That is a wonderful shot. Westwood's going to have a chance to save par. That's sort of a British Open lie, wasn't it, Roger? Yeah, it's, <laughs> you have to have some confidence to play that shot, I'll promise you. Boy, you could chunk that in that bunker in a heartbeat and it would bury. That's the problem. Okay, Roger. Okay, now just a simple little pitch from in front Hold of the up, guys. now, but uh, he seems to be playing in a little quicker rhythm in the last couple of shots to me than he would normally take. It seems. This would be but quite, not, quite not the bogey. It would be quite the bogey. Oh, yeah, it would. It wouldn't surprise me knowing him, though. Better be careful not to knock it by, though. I'm trying to make it. 
Well, if he makes that, Tiger Woods will have started his four rounds in this U.S. Open with double bogeys three times. And then the other one, when he didn't make a double at the start, was on Friday in the round two. He made two bogeys and a par in the first three holes there. So disastrous starts for Tiger as you look at his U.S. Open double bogey record there. And it's not a proud one. Fourth double bogey of the week for Tiger. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on him. He wants a win in Southern Cal. He's got the knee and uh, he's got the lead. Normal. Over to three. Exactly. And yeah, Rocco exactly. mediates T shot. He's made a two, a three, and a four here, Mark. Straight right to left here. Well, he's played this stretch of the course quite nicely. He was just telling me that he birdied the second hole three times, so he feels good here. 137 yards, Murph. Tough combination downhill into the wind. Actually, the wind's a little more from the right. He's got to aim this just inside the right edge of the green, I think. The big draw yesterday from 189 yards. Boy, this is an aggressive line here. Yeah! Oh, it hit the back of the hole, I think. We'll get a replay on that. I think it hit the back of the top. Almost a slam dunk. <laughs> Very nearly, wasn't it? Here's our replay. Watch where it lands. Up and down and oh, yeah, because to go dead left like that. Up to one. And for par, Westwood. Breaking left to right here. So Westwood falls immediately to minus one. And Rocco Mediate at minus two is going to have the lead because Tiger's going to drop at least two here back to minus one. After taking the outright lead for the first time in the championship on the last hole yesterday, Tigers on the cusp here of giving it all back in his very first hole. Well, he's had three Eagles. This is his fourth double bogey. That, he's, it's very unusual for an open. He's just keeping that uh, line going like he's done all week long, up and down, and a few Eagles sprinkled in. What's the feeling like out there, Roger? It's got to be like a lot of tension in here. It's, it's absolute shock, Johnny. I don't think anybody can believe what they're watching here. I really don't. I think right edge. So Tiger's fourth double of the week, the most he's ever had in this championship, yet he's just one back. Well, he's lost his lead, and that doesn't happen often, Roger, on Sunday when he's got one. So there is your leader in the U.S. <laughs> Open, Rocco Mediate. He spent all the time on the golf course hearing all those Tiger roars yesterday. In fact, when I talked to him last night, I said, that must have been an experience. You wondering what was going on out there. He goes, yeah, can you send me a DVD of it? Because I'd like to see what everybody's been telling me. I can't believe it's all happened. Yeah, he's a character. He looks more like the guy that cleans Tiger's swimming pool. He's overcome so many physical problems through the year. The back surgery uh, back in 94. And uh, so far, he has persevered through all of them. He's a great guy. You know, I've done this five or six times in my career coming back from you know, everything bad. And to be able to do this again, I, I'm actually shocked, but I'm very pleased. And, and, you know, it's like, I remember Ray Floyd said when he won at Shinnecock, he said, I had to do it today because he didn't think he'd have any more chances. Well, that's what I have to do, but I have a big mountain to climb with these, with, you know, with Lee and with, um, with Tiger in front of you. He, like, like they say, he's never lost with the lead, ever. <laughs> so I have to do something special to have a chance. And it still might not be good enough. And a guy with that kind of experience knows that opportunities like this, Johnny, do not come along very often. So we'll see how Rocco handles it with a one shot lead at the moment. Over at the sixth, Ernie Els for par. He's had some good chances the last couple of holes, but just going over the edges. So coming off birdie at five, Els will bogey six, fall back to plus three. He's only five behind, though. Over at the second. Lee Westwood on the tee, the short par four. A lot of players hit less than driver. When coming off the right here. Try to dial in something left or right if you can. Oh, bunker down the line, about 280 yards. So a lot of players trying to play short of that. That should be very good, I would imagine. 
let's take a look at this 389 yard par four second hole. Fairway sloping severely from players left to right. Second shot played across a little hollow to uh, the green, very uh, much the same as many out here. Three distinctive levels, one on the left, one on the right, and one in the front. And they're all divided up by ridges, and you can see where the balls want to go. Hole location today over on the right-hand side, so we've seen quite a few birdies from those players who have been able to hit the ball in the fairway. Why does he hit a driver here, Gary? I, I don't know, John. This is, uh, he did not hit one here yesterday. Boy, he went at that hard. I don't understand that. It's going right, too. Roger, why would he hit driver here? I don't know, Johnny. I really don't. I think he could take it across that bunker on the right if he wanted to. And the first major grimace of the day comes at the second for Tiger, who uh, has been using his clubs as a cane. I'll tell you what. Steve Williams might have to be a little stronger with the, his advice uh, to Tiger right now. I really believe that. That he could hit it to the top of the hill with what club, Gary? Just a well, iron. I think a long iron, sure, Johnny. And just have what a nine uh, iron or wedge. A nine iron or a full pitching wedge. Head to three. And Rocco for a birdie. Pretty straight putt, actually. Oh, he's got it on the edge. He's got it on the edge. He was playing for a little ocean pull there. Oh, boy, that one hurts. You don't want to waste those opportunities. Rocco's doing just fine, thank you. Leading the U.S. Open. And you can bet he's thinking about it. He's going back to Raymond Floyd's thoughts, and he's trying, trying his best. Welcome back at the par four second. Lee Westwood getting ready, ready with his approach. That's for 132. Will really they land the ball about five or six yards short of the hole? Ooh, okay. Raj, how about Tiger's lie in the right rough? Yeah, it is not a good one, and he has no play at the hole. I'm sure he has to be looking up into the center of the green, left center of the green. Just a shot of 75 yards. But Terrible angle out there. It's, oh, it's awful. Get the That's all he can do. I, I, that's really a pretty good effort to get it there. You see the swing he made just trying to advance it about 70 yards. The ball will funnel back into the middle of the green and leave a long and very difficult putt for birdie up and over a ridge. Big break left to right. Yeah, big break left to right, and one that's very difficult to judge the speed on, too, Johnny. Most of the players have been racing it well by from there. Up at four. 488 yard par four along the cliffs here of Torrey, leader by one. Yards closer to the canyon there, so the bailout is to the right, definitely, and that's not a bad spot. With the front right hole location, that'd be just fine. And just a moment ago at the fifth, this was Robert Carlson's third shot. Throw it in the left rough, fortunate to get it up by the green, and plays a very nice shot, as I said, that just a moment ago. So he'll have a chance to save par there. We go back to four. And Jeff Ogilvie's tee shot. Three pars to start for oh Ogilvy. <laughs> that is gone. That is gone. That might be over the cliff. God. And we'll get a report on that in a moment. Back over to five. Carlson has this yeah, four footer for a par. And a pretty straightforward four footer, Gary. There's, I don't see any hardly any break here, and slightly uphill. player seven wins on the European tour the most by ever by a Swede Played on the Ryder Cup team back in 06. And 
comes in with a lot of confidence. He's already had three top three finishes on the European Tour so far this year. So also remains at plus one, just three off the lead as we go to seven. And Ernie Els. Second at the par four, he clipped it pretty nicely. Still driving the ball left and right, Ernie is. Oh, this is nice. This is going to run right up by the hole. He's plus three. Back to two. And the lengthy birdie putt for Tiger Woods. You know, most of this putt, Gary, uphill and uh, breaking quite a little bit to the right. And then about 20 feet short of the hole, it starts to run away to the back right part of the green. And that's been the difficulty, Raj. Uh, a lot of the guys have uh, not judged the pace of this putt very well. I've seen plenty of guys race at four or five, even six feet by the hole. Good look into Tiger's eyes there, just visualizing the path that he wants the ball to take. Hill part, but is it enough? Uh, it's not going to get there. No. So, about five or six feet left for a par. Ahead to four. And Rocco ready for his second. Mark. It's a long one, Dan. 208 oh, yards to the there, hole. Right? Come on, baby. Come off that you slope. Like it. Kick left. There are those uh, little sideboards over there, those mounds that feed it back toward the hole. That's a good miss, Mark. No problem for him from there. Shouldn't be. Good putt it. Ogilvy has taken a drop. The ball went over the cliff. He actually could have played it, but uh, decided not to since there was a bare spot to drop it here. This one doesn't look too easy either. No, he's got 190 yards and certainly not as good an angle as Rocco had. You see the flag there just on the top of it. How's that look? You have to ask me where that wind. I thought the wind would blow it to the Long right, the but it did now. not. And yeah. now he's got a buried lie over to two. And Lee Westwood with a birdie opportunity. Chance to tie mediate at two under. And this putt will move from his right to left. Good looking putt if it stays up. Oh, just not enough speed. Two time U.S. Open winner there. Big easy is for a birdie. Wow. Just can't seem to mount anything, Kenny. Can't Gotta get make it going. Those. That's three yeah. short ones in a row. Back at the second. Tiger Woods for his par. And just about four feet, and it will move some to his right. That's not good timing, Gary. No, never is, John. Uh, right when you're ready to pull the trigger. But it's the one thing about this golf course, a lot of uh, greens and tees in close proximity. And a lot of people out here, too. Four. And Rocco's third. In a good spot. Pretty straightforward shot here. Not bad. Leaves it below the hole. Didn't really need to loft that, did he, Mark? He could have putted it or hit it with a three wood or whatever. Back to two. Tiger for the bogey. So a double bogey, bogey start. And Tiger Woods is back to even par. That's his third three putt of the week. That's how he feels about that. Well, we're seeing a lot of things this week we've never seen before out of Tiger. Over at five, uh, the little roar that uh, forced Tiger to back off. 
There's this shot from Camila Vajegas. Looks like he might almost pull it. Well done. Vajegas will have that short putt for a par to remain at plus two. Gary, the course average today has dropped from 75.1 to 72.5, so the shorter yardage is proving to be easier. Fourth shot for the buried lie for Ogilvy at the fourth. Oh, and that was a beauty just a moment ago, so may only lose one. That was very impressive, despite going over the cliff with his tee shot. There's a beautiful look down the coast of that fourth hole. Also, that green moved closer to the Canyon as well and the bluff. Yeah, it's La Jolla down there, the jewel. Mm -hmm. On this uh, city owned golf course. And Johnny, as I look at Rocco right now and walking up the fairway, he was chatting it up again and he's got that happy face on. You know, <laughs> yesterday, when he had the happy face on, he played great. Of course, it's maybe a cause and effect, but you know, things went a little bit south for about 40 minutes in the middle of the round, but then he got it back at the end. and. I think when he's got this good sort of happy go lucky attitude he plays better. These are the ones you got to make though if you want to win. It's looking a little right. Perfect. Mediate the most solid of the contenders by far not a bogey one under. In fact in the last three groups he's got the only bogey free card going. Well, he's playing like Curtis Strange said, you got to play. You know, you hit fairways, you hit greens. Uh, you don't have to hit it too far, just get the job done. Let's go over to the third. Boat out there with the American flag on it, and it's quite a scene. Yeah, you want to shoot to the right of that, Dan. That's too close to the canyon over there. You don't want to, you don't want to line it up with Old Glory, do you? No, sir. Put it somewhere in the sort towards the center of the bunker and let it drift a little with the wind if it wishes. Got West wedge wind. here. Just right of the hole. It's close to trickling down. No, it stops. That's good. Good position. That should help Tiger, Roger, to know what club to hit and how the winds are reacting. You know, Roger, we watched Tiger start with a double bogey yesterday and come back with heroics. But double bogey, bogey start today. I don't have the same good feeling with his knee the way it is. The same feeling, uh, Bob. The, the pain he experienced there, too. He was obviously very uncomfortable walking down that fairway. It's just, just about in the same line as Wes was. It should stay right there. Yes, it does. Roger and Murph's comments though, Johnny, every time and through the years, there's been a lot of tendencies to count Tiger out. Almost every time, he's proven it's wrong. But he's had two pretty good knees to do it with. True enough. And Roger talking about how Tiger has been feeling in the early going. These were the kinds of shots that were coming late in the round yesterday. Such a beautiful contrast, the rugged coastline of the bluffs here above below Torrey Pines Golf Course and out there on the third hole, very close to the cliffs. Tiger Woods. And it would appear apparent that Tiger has to wheel this club to do any magic. He's going to have to wield it if he wants to win today. He's going to have to be really good with the flat stick. made par here every day. Westwood should have learned from the pace and the line there. And over at the fifth, Rocco mediate on the tee. Rocco! 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 Even though the hole moves left to right. He 
He's got confidence in it, Johnny. He just yeah. keeps playing it over and over again. He's hitting the ball the best tee to green uh, throughout the week. It's just consistently two thirds of the fairways, two thirds of the greens, Gary. Up at six. And the third for Robert Carlson at the long par four. Pretty good break getting that fairway lie. Very quick, as you can see. Green Carlson. Looking a lot more calm than he was with Tiger yeah. yesterday. Green's running like 13 and a half, 13, somewhere near. Right in that area. To three. Lee Westwood now, Roger. Well, very similar putt to the one that Tiger just had to move to his right. Good rhythm going with that putting. It's so smooth. Swing. The backstroke. Watch the backstroke. These guys are a little tentative right now, aren't they, Murph? Well, you can understand it. These greens are pretty rapid. Well, that one you can be aggressive with a little bit. Shied off a little, you're right. Discussion with his caddy as he walks off. Robert Carlson said yesterday playing with Tiger, it was a Different world. <laughs> well, Westwood's fellow countryman Luke Donald being attended to just a little while ago after his tee shot at the 15th. The medics coming over and wrapping his left wrist. He hurt while teeing off with a par four. Hmm. And then Luke just says, I cannot give this anymore. It's a, a WD for Luke Donald, who is plus six through 14 holes. So oh, he's going to go root on, maybe. Lee Westwood over to five. Yeah, mediate second shot. From 179 yards. Oh, back for it to come back and get down, I think. Yeah, it's in the back of the green. Got to be careful. All going to depend on the lie. The seven. And the tee shot of Robert Carlson and Dottie Year there. I am a driver here at this long par four. Wind from the right and helping. Good par four, 461 yards. Fairway slopes left to right as well as dog legs. I love it when holes fit the, the lay of the land. And in this case, it really does. That's a beauty started up the right side riding the wind right toward the center. Carlson said playing with Jimenez today will be like a practice round. <laughs> One behind the leader Lee Westwood at the fourth got to be careful. Remember what happened to Jeff Ogilvie earlier. Wind against and from the left and this one going up the right. Going at the fairway bunker in the right. Popular spot. Keep it here for Tiger. Made his first par at the last, but again, a double bogey and then a bogey start. Had the lead by one to start this day. Well, here we go with uh, something other than a driver, which could be what he needs to do. Maybe he can hit this thing straight. Just sort of swing smooth on it, Rod, uh, Tiger. That looks a lot better. Drawing this ball right to left. It's going down the left hand side. Wants the wind to hold it. Oh, just on the edge over there. That could be the club he needs to hit the rest of the day. Guys, I've been told that the group was told on the third tee to pick up their pace a little bit. They've fallen behind. They're not on the clock, but they've been told to pick up. Well, they've been Can't all be over great. the course. Well, and a guy with a wounded knee, <laughs> hard for him to get around. Here. Well, the main thing is the number of shots That's required. True. Over to five. Just a moment ago, Jeff Ogilvy after a big drive. 144 yards, just a good firm pitching wedge, throws it in there hole high. So he'll have an opportunity to get a shot back that he just dropped it for. Well, happy Father's Day to everyone out there watching the telecast just after five o'clock out of the East Coast, 5.15 and uh, Fathers with their sons and daughters out here along the Cliffs of Torrey Pines. Record.
crowds this week. In fact, they set a single day U.S. Open attendance record on Friday when nearly 53,000 were here. And Sunday on Dad's Day, to wish my dad happy Father's Day. Watching back out in Arizona, this U.S. Open final round has been on Father's Day every year <laughs> since 1965. And how about that little guy giving his dad a hard time up top there? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Out at the fifth. Yeah, getting ready for his third and uh, telling his caddy to take the flag stick out. So I would assume that means he's got a pretty darn good lie, Mark. It is a very good lie, Gary. This is certainly a shot he could hold. 15 feet of green once the ball gets on the putting surface. Grass won that battle, Johnny. Did not keep the club moving through. The big thing is you got to keep it up higher on the grass blade. You don't need to go down to the roots. And pros do that all the time. They go back down too deep and hit the top of the club. See that hit the very top of that club, Gary. Do you and see that? Yeah, and when it does, it comes out dead, right? Yeah, just dead. There's no weight up there. You got to hit in the sweet spot. You got to hold the club up like he does with his driver. So, 88 uh, struggling a little bit here at the fifth. Whereas Ogilvy has a, a birdie opportunity. It's a very good chance here. Putt should turn That's just a little good. to Jeff's right. Boy, Johnny, you were right at the top of the show talking about the sort of smoke and mirrors way Ogilvy has played. He could easily be three or four over for the day right now. How about that par at number one, Gary? Did the same thing at number two. But he can flat putt. Just 81 putts through the first three rounds of this championship. He was number two in the field in that category. Ogilvy back to one over par. Right there. Number four. And Tiger from the left side, Roger. 219 left to the hole. When coming from the left and against. And you can have that bank to the right you can utilize and have to bounce this ball into the green to get it close. Ball a little bit above his feet here, which will help him turn it back into that one jump. Right at the tower. Smooth one, Tiger. You have to rip it. Wow, is that a big bender right to left? Is that necessary, Roger? Well, I don't know, Jeb, but obviously that swing bothered him a lot as well. Well, it's putting, you know, a little too much club. When you hit a hook, that big a hook, you take off loft and you hit a very strong flight and it goes longer. That was a big hook, wasn't it? Yes, it was a pronounced right to left. Tiger in a Sunday red framed against the Pacific Ocean. I remember at the U.S. Open, remember at Shinnecock when he was an amateur, he pulled off because of what, the yep. wrist? Yep. To five. Mediate for par to remain two under. A straight putt. Oh. That's pushed. Yes, it was. Quickly back to four. And Westwood from the fairway bunker. And he's now tied for the lead. With BD8 dropping a shot. A good angle. 194, Jerry. Ball sitting down just a little. He likes it. Well, he's made good contact, a very low shot going up to right. Gonna want to use that bank. Back there with Tiger. Same idea. Wood started off with a bogey, but it's settled down. Looking for another par. He'll have a long birdie try at four, but three straight pars perhaps after the bogey start. And ahead to seven. And Robert Carlson now, 167 yards to the hole. Remember that fall off area to the left and in back of the hole as well. Good shot. Wood lands too hard. A little unlucky Just there. Dribbles down. Yes, that was. Not bad there. You can putt up that hill. Still a chance to make three. We'll be back to the U.S. Open Championship in just a moment. Long birdie attempt at the fourth. 
Hasn't had a three putt in the whole championship. Last half of this putt downhill just crossed the ridge. Do himself a putt that's probably at least right edge. Up ahead at the sixth. I want to show you what happened to Camilo Bijegas. This for bogey at this 500 yard plus par four. And so that was a three putt double bogey for Bijegas. Playing with Allenby, this was his par attempt. And Allenby, after starting with five straight pars, drops his first shot at the sixth. Plus three he goes. But he's only four back with a lot of golf left as we go to 16. And Carl Peterson has this putt for a birdie. Chance to get to plus three. It should turn to the left. Yeah, very nice. So Peterson plus three for the championship with two holes left to play as we go to seven. And Carlson for a par. He tried to wedge it up and stop short. Odd choice of clubs actually down there. Back to four. And Tiger Roger. On a little different line, but uh, got a good look at the pace of Westwood's putts over there. But still, the idea is the same across the ridge and then downhill, break and right. Is he going to drop another one? Almost. Didn't give it quite enough break. T at six, up a little bit today, some 17 yards, 498. So it's just about 500. Rocco tied for the lead. And that's good news with the tee shot. And another good tee shot here. Not the longest hitter at age 45. But Rocco loves these championships. He feels the U.S. Open gives him a great chance because of its uh, demands to be precise. A look from the pro tracer point of view here, Johnny, and Rocco's tee shot. I really like Rocco's uh, action, not because it's pretty or a standard procedure, but he has a lot of motion. He has a lot of motion, big wide stance, a la Jimmy Ballard, moves off it with his head. Totally off it with his head and then watch he moves his head back into the ball back to where he started and then stabilizes there and then hits and releases. See how high his right shoulder is up into his chin and a perfectly balanced finish. Not a powerful move. That's not a power kind of a swing, but uh, gets the job done. At the fourth Westwood to stay tied with Rocco that curls in. So Westwood. With three straight pars since the opening bogey and over to 17. And Carl Peterson's second shot here at the par four. Very accessible hole location today, Johnny, in the back left. You know, with Tiger the way he's going, Gary, who knows? Somebody at one or two over oh, posting well. early. Who knows? Who we, knows? We might adjust that earlier yeah. thought you had of three under perhaps being a good yeah, because number. Uh, we didn't know Tiger was going to get off yep. the double bogey bogey start. So now there's a whole bunch of numbers into play, wouldn't you think, Gary? I would agree, John. I mean, just think if Peterson were to make that putt and then somehow Eagle 18, he'd be in at even par. Even one over, who yeah. knows? He posted early and let him shoot at it. Who knows is the it's the real deal because you don't know how many Eagles Tiger's gonna drop in on he gets the on one the back over nine or something. He gets the one over, it's just a two shot cushion on Westwood and Mediate. Uh, they got a lot of bogey holes coming up. Move to the tee at the fifth, the 453 yard slight dog leg to the right, par four. Players have hit this fairway more than uh, any other on the front nine, more than 62% of the time. Of course, the championship it doesn't look very wide, and it isn't very wide well, down you between the bunkers. Uh, true, John, it is not, and the fairway does slope from uh, left to right. Maybe because it's downwind, right? Or across, down and across. Going right here. Looks like he was losing it right. It's going to be uh, over Tiger, there where Tiger. the rough is pretty light. Tiger and uh, Johnny, maybe uh, your <laughs> ESP has gotten to him because uh, again, without the driver, yeah, he just has to get something where he can do that stylish swing, Roger. Don't you think? Just sort of cruise it through there. Uh, don't try to be torquing on that left knee. Don't try to hit it. 
He's been hitting at nine miles with the bad knee, folks, just so you know, it's second longest hitter this week. But that one bothered him too. You know, it's not the snap, it's the torque, uh, I believe, because that's what happens when I try to hit a driver. What happens is the left foot is planted. If he was wearing tennis shoes, well, let's watch this. If he was wearing tennis shoes where his foot could slip better, it wouldn't hurt as much. But see, he, the fact that it's planted and now the knee just torques on top of the other, of the lower leg, and it just really tears up that knee. If you could just slip, I don't think it would hurt as much. And to six. And Rocco mediate with his second position nicely. A ways away and a long par four though. 200 left. But he's 47 yards closer than he was yesterday. This is going right though. And well, way short. But you know, not too bad, Johnny. I mean, it's. Boy. Yes, yeah. has haven't been bad. Yeah, the front of the greens like, uh, you know, like number four on this one is just fine. And up at the ninth, Ernie Els has this putt for birdie here at the par five. Turns to the left. Boy, Johnny, he just cannot get anything to go in the hole. I don't know what it is. When you get in the second part of your career, it's just the ball just likes to go over the edge. It doesn't go in like when you're younger. Good. Here's Ogilvy from the rough at uh, the sixth. Jeff's got 180, and I would think he'll have to bounce this one up there coming out of the rough. It's a pretty good lie, though. Let go left, Mark. Just a little bit, fading back now. Very high in the air, and he's going to carry it up there. That's good, boy. He's a scrambling Jesse. That's a heck of a shot right there. One of the best shots we've seen. Cool under pressure, Jeff Ogilvy. Finishing up at 18 is Michael Thompson. Watch this putt. This could be the putt to win the championship later in the day. Straight, 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 pretty straight. And he is going to take low amateur honors, the runner up in that U.S. amateur championship. Nice. So Colt Nost, who decided to turn pro and, of course, forfeited uh, the exemptions he had in the majors and a low amateur by five shots over Ricky Fowler and Derek Fathauer. It's pretty good playing really a 74 and a 72 and 273. Mm -hmm. So he's averaging 73 a day. That's good. 17. And Carl Peterson's birdie effort just a little high. So he will remain at three over for the championship three under for the day if he can tap that in so back to seven. Camilo Bijegas, his second, 130 yards. A couple over for the day. Looks like he's ready to paint somebody's house. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, it stopped very quickly. It's all holes to go. This lie with the ball below his feet actually will put more pressure on his knee. All right, second shot, uh, 182 yards, Rod. It is Gary and of course the wind again from the right helping some it doesn't really match up for the shot very well. I'm trying to get some kind of cut in here and see if we can get it working over toward the direction of the hole. It's the most time I've seen him back off the ball in a short amount of holes, Gary. That's about three times at least. Let's go any further than 170 here. That was a switch from a seven iron to a six. He's going to try to play something a little choke up on it. So I'm going to try to cut it up here. This ball going at the center of the green, not really moving right much. Top shelf there on the left hand side as we go ahead to six. And Rocco's third from not a bad spot. Little pitch up toward the hole. Gets away from him a little bit. Not what he wanted at all. Not what he wanted. And back to five. And Westwood with his second. And uh, Rod, the lie appears to be reasonable. Reasonable? You couldn't pray for a lie this good <laughs> in the primary stuff. This is unbelievable. Bob blew his feet. Obviously not a good angle, but 156 left of the hole. 
No way it's going to jump, is it, Roger? Well, you know, that's always the X factor, John. But it uh, looks pretty innocent. The ground there, the grass is really pretty, uh, pretty dry. All right, we'll move ahead quickly to six. And Ogilvy for a birdie to get it to even within one. He's a very aggressive putter. Back to five. Westwood second. Be good. Oh, this left good. to the hole. A lot of Tiger's ball. Ooh, but he gets that through. did jump a little bit, I believe. Yeah, I was looking at that dry grass, Gary, thinking, you know, I remember those shots out of that stuff. <laughs> well, in the old days with the grooves we used to play with, you'd get them to jump sometimes 15 or 20 yards. Yeah. So, uh, delicate little shot left for Westwood there. We move ahead to 10. And this was just earlier. Brant Snedeker's second at plus four, making the turn here even for his round shot a 68 yesterday which was the low round of Saturday's play and Snedeker made that moved it to plus three and he is just four back with eight to play over to the sixth Rocco is going to drop another one second straight pole that he's bogeyed and he's back to even and out of the lead and Westwood is the man by himself right now. Uh, sort of an unforced bogey there. He should have made made par from where he was in two. Yep. So he birdied the second hole to get it to two under, take the lead by himself, and he's given them all back in the last two holes. Now Ogilvy for par to remain at plus one. All of those players crashing around him on the way to the 72nd hole at Wingfoot. Ogilvy does admit that you know, he kind of backed into the championship a little bit. Nevertheless, knows he's the U.S. Open champion. I would imagine that Ogilvy would love to just win this championship from the field in a way that would make him appreciate it even more. And now Rocco for the bogey. <laughs> Tiger to Mickelson, one of the most popular players here all week long. He has got that ability to look at the gallery, have a good time, even while challenging a U.S. Open golf course. And there is Westwood, the leader by himself, the only player under par. And he's over at the fifth. Getting ready for his third, and it is a delicate little shot, Raj. Yes, it is. Ball sitting down a little bit here. Very quick going down the hole. Scorecard as uh, off to that tough start. Double bogey at one, three putt bogey at two. But still just one off the lead. Yeah, putting off a ledge here on the left hand side of the green will cross over a ridge and pick up speed and turn right. Quite a little bit actually. Seven and Vijegas for the birdie. Uh, just got to give it a little speed coming up that hill there. Back to Tiger. The tap in par. To remain at even par. Back out to five. Westwood tapping in for his par. So the final group through five. Westwood minus one, Tiger at even, along with Mediate. We go to Mediate at seven. Gleg right, Rocco aiming down the right side. Just to draw it up against the turn in the fairway. He missed that bunker yesterday. He's back in it again today. That one appears to be sitting down. That may be dangerous. 
Lee Westwood maintaining a one-shot lead over Woods and Mediate. We'll be back to Torrey Pines in just a moment. Eighth U.S. Open Championship, Tory Pines welcoming this championship for the very first time, and Lee Westwood at the sixth, 498 yard par four, dog leg to the right, eucalyptus tree out there on the corner, perfection. He loves it. Tees moved up today, nearly 20 yards, and much easier today. Had only eight birdies the first three days. There have already been eight today. Now Tiger. He's hit it so beautifully on this hole as a cut, Roger, but do you think he won't go that way because it hurts? Well, he hit one here yesterday that was absolutely perfect. And he says the pain is after contact. So and he says, it's just a little pain. I'll put up with that. So he's down played it all. He's gotta week. play the cut with the wind. That one was an audible. Yeah, but it's in the fairway. Yeah, you can't go by his reaction because he's reacting to pain, but not f basically uh, the shot he's hit. Let's go by the pro tracer here. Uh, he's hit it perfect every day with that cut around that eucalyptus tree. Oh, yeah. It's a very unusual sound to hear from a drive that's hit exactly the way he wants it, but the pain will tell you that it's hurt. Well, uh, Dan, let's use our NBC at technology. We'll zoom in on Tiger's knee and watch this drive here at the sixth. See if we can see anything. Johnny's in good position there. He is. It's just the torque at, and coming into it, how it twists on top of, uh, you know, his lower leg, the twisting in there. And look at the yeah, foot jump. You can see the foot jumping around. That's exactly right. I think right. the foot jumping around might help it because if he plants it, then it really torques his knee. It's not so much when he drives the weight up onto it. You think it's more when it turns around to the left. Yeah, because I had my knee operated two days before. And it's the same thing. You know, I can walk normally. People don't even think there's anything wrong like a normal gait, but it's the twist. Tiger sounded more like an NFL lineman in the trenches than he is a golfer today. Tough Seven. Shot. Tough shot with that right. line. Second. Yeah, he's got a little bit of sand behind the ball, probably the back one third of the ball. That's that first raking in the morning pulls up those little nodules of sand and he had the right idea. He's trying to run it in there. Yep. Murph. Over to 10. Else from behind the green. His third he hasn't been able to make a putt. Maybe how about a chip. And back chip for else to plus two within three. Golf's a funny game, isn't it? And you don't think the crowd loves Ernie Els? Picked up his uh, first win in several years earlier this year at the Honda. And over at the ninth. The par five that's uh, playing shorter today. Some 24 yards. Mike Weir with a birdie putt. And that's nicely done. Moves Weir to plus three. So the former Masters champion hanging around. I think Weir, you know, I think Weir and Rocco set up the course today. <laughs> over at seven. Jeff Ogilvy swing, good balance there. With a long look, asking for the wind to help. And he gets a nice kick off that side. Good birdie you, position. In case you guys miss it, you know, the course can play 7,643 yards. And today, the USJ decided to push it up to 7,280. Carl Peterson finishing out this hit long birdie try at the par five. Yeah. Stays pretty straight for a while and then moves right right at the end. It's going to be a three under round of 68 for Peterson. I think he had to have that one. He wants to stay around for a playoff tomorrow. I'm not saying that's going to do it, but it gives him at least an outside shot. And he is the leader in the clubhouse at the moment. But the last few groups still have several holes left in their opening nine. And we go there to the sixth. And Lee Westwood. Ball sitting down just a little bit. 
gorgeous day now, Roger. Oh, 70 yeah. degrees as the fog is beginning to burn a little bit more Still away up. from the shoreline. So this is uh, down pretty good right now. Yeah, downwind, John, a little left to right. 182. And I say the ball settled down about half of it is above the lovely top of the grass. So, uh, you know, again, the question is does it jump? What does it do exactly? While Westwood looks it over, we go up ahead to seven. And now Rocco from the bunker. Dangerous shot, only about four steps to the big swale that drops off in back of this hole. What a wonderful bunker shot. Working hard, up to six. Westwood's ready. We saw Ogilvy hit a beauty here, remember? Oh, go. This ball oh, a little off to the hole. He wanted it to go, but I don't know why. It landed pretty softly, really. But this is continuing to be a steady round for Westwood. And we've remarked numerous times that now, in contrast, his play has been this week compared to Tiger. He's got all pars aside from the opening bogey today. Well, this is a birdie opportunity, Raj. It is. This is from the left side of the fairway now, almost directly down from this angle. It's only 170 yards. Come on, Tiger! One yard. Oh, oh, chance right to the hole. A good looking shot here. Oh, it doesn't quite carry to the front though. That's a little unusual. And those fronts have been shaved. They're Bermuda grass put in there on purpose. So you have the tight lie, but the ball will back down off of them. And, and we'll see that uh, on several holes coming in. I had to seven again. And Jeff Ogilvy now for a birdie. Lengthy one. Little right to left in this pot. Whoa. It's oh, in. Oh, yeah. He said, don't forget what happened to me at Wingfoot. You know, big swings take place. He's got a chance. One shot back. Over to 11. And Ernie else looking down the hill at the 217 yard par three. Can't help but remember what happened at Congressional in his last U.S. Open win 11 years ago. He chipped in at the par 4 10th there for a birdie, just like he did a moment ago here on his way to winning that championship. So maybe that's a pleasant omen for Ernie, who's lined up for another birdie at 11 to 7. And Rocco now for a par. Good read on Ogilvy's putt. Firmly in, well played, nice save. You have to do that. Like he's looking around for somebody to talk to all the time. <laughs> Carry a head cover or something. Stick it over his left hand. Here's the par 3 8th, 179. DJ Trahan's tee shot just a moment ago. Trahan beginning the day at plus one. He's now plus three for the day. And that's even with a birdie at the seventh. And Trahan at eight. So he's looking to get it to plus three within four. And apparently there's been an issue with Brent Snedeker. David Fay, what can you tell us about this? Well, on the ninth hole, he was uh, reaching down to mark his ball, and the coin dropped and hit the ball and moved it. Now, under the rules, Rule 20-1, if the act is directly attributable to the specific act of marking or lifting a ball, no penalty. However, there is a specific decision which says Dropping a ball marker, regardless of the height from which it was dropped, is not considered to be directly attributable and would result in the player incurring a penalty stroke. And that's what happened in this case. So he had, so he had to uh, replace the ball, and it's a one-stroke penalty. Okay, wow. Thank you, David. Trahan to get it to plus three. DJ Trahan had never made a cut in a major championship before. Earning himself a spot in the third to last group. Started off with four bogeys in the first five holes. Now has back to back birdies to get back in it. Els trying to get back in it at 11. He's missed a bunch of them from this length. Needs to start dropping some putts, and that's not going to get there either. Just that length right there. The makeable length is not going in. Over to six, and Tiger short of the green. Raj. Play a little chicken run here. Try to 
bounce the ball up this slope. Very tight line. Should be into the green. Go! 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 Is that going to go in? There you go. <laughs> Look good for a while. So Tiger has settled down after the double bogey start and bogey at the second. He's going to pick up his fourth straight par here. And he is still just one back, currently tied with this Australian Jeff Ogilvie on the tee at eight, Mark. 179 yard shot up the hill, wind right behind. His moon ball should help here, Mark. It should, Johnny. Hold it just a little. He puffed his belly out a little bit there and uh, makes you pull it sometimes when you tee it up. Over to nine. Where Robert Carlson has this lengthy putt for a par. Some 45 feet up the ridge just has made a mess of the hole. Johnny got it in the left rough and played the whole hole up the left side. So he's going to make bogey on the very easy par five ninth. So we go back to eight. And as you can see this from tee to green rising up some 22 feet players don't see much of the green surface and he needs to hit the bottom tier to scoot it up there. Just like that. Just perfectly landed, just a little push. And over at the sixth, Lee Westwood, Roger. First 10 feet of this putt, a little uphill, then it'll go across the ridge and then downhill, the remainder of the way to the cup. Should be able to do his right coming down the hill. Uh oh, that, that was a good looking putt. Looked like it might go. Westwood has worked so hard on his short game in addition to his fitness. In fact, his uh, agent Chubby Chandler told me he's put on seven pounds over the past couple of years but lost six inches on his waistline. He dedicated himself had a couple of children Samuel and Poppy who were born and he said he lost his focus a little bit but rededicated himself fitness and the short game. In fact there was a time when Lee Westwood was embarrassed to come over to the United States because he just wasn't confident with a short game that you needed to play here on American courses. Yeah, he's been working with former tour player Mark Rowe on a short game last year and it's he's played great ever since he's had 13 top tens in the last 21 starts he's had. 35 a win 35 years old in search of the first major. And says I have not given up hope of winning a major and now that I've got a short game and I'm in much better shape I believe I've got a real chance. This coming from a guy who's won 27 times worldwide, including 18 European Tour wins. None would be sweeter than a U.S. Open championship. And he's in the lead by one on the cliffs of Torrey Pines. Back after this. Torrey Pines has welcomed record setting crowds in its first U.S. Open Championship staged here. Done such a good job. You have to wonder about the prospects in the future. And uh, you would think, Johnny, that uh, there might be another one coming back here. Yeah, probably in years to, to 12 come. years from now. Got a chance. Ernie Els at the 12th. 213 yards remaining for his second. Hardest hole on the golf course. This is one of those hurdles you have to get over here on the back nine. Back into the breeze. Kind of boring in from the right. What a shot by Els. If he can just make some putts, he's got, he could make a great run here. That's a great shot and the hardest hole in the golf course. Yeah, just 20% of the field reaching that green at 12 today. Rocco at the eighth for birdie. And over at the seventh. And Lee Westwood's tee shot now. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 And the fans love it. This is one of the holes, Murphy. You really need to hit the fairway, I believe. Well, that's a beauty there. Let's have a good look at this hole to see where the players tee off. That bunker on the left, that's where Rocco Mediate was. You don't want to be there. 
fairway slopes left to right. The whole location today is up in the back middle and watch the balls as they roll. They roll straight back down and of course they get that swale action going over there on the left. So everything comes back to the players. Back to the T and Tiger. Trying to go with a neutral drive, I don't like it. Hard to tell where it is on my looks as if it is. It's in the right rough, but popped up nicely, didn't it? It did. Good shot from there, probably. All right, from the other side is Ogilvy and his birdie try. And that looks good. Was a very near miss for a third birdie in the last four holes. Ogilvy's going to stay at even par. Over at the ninth, Camilo Bajegas with a chance for an eagle three. Second shot in here from just over 270 yards. Tough hole location today here, though, Johnny, up on a little shelf. So he's putting uh, quite a bit uphill. I remember the old green used to be canted the same way and people would come up short going this direction. Well, they still are. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah, it's just it's you're going away from the ocean. Uh, you're also the grain. What there is is into you into the right. Back at seven. And Roger Malby that appears to be a good pretty good lie. It is the ball supported by the grass here. 165 to the whole wind from the right helping a little bit. Uh, Need to be careful not to go wrong here. He doesn't want this ball to jump. I'll promise you that. There's not a whole lot behind it. You don't want to hit it over. That's exactly right. There's about four steps behind it, about four steps left of it. This is a hole location that they, the USGA, they love these hole locations. And you know, in opens paths, this lie right here would be four to five to six inches deep and rough. And that's amazing. This course, one under par is leading with this light rough. Has to be played precisely. Hit very go. high in the air, wants it to go. This ball Mosh. just not taken off the way he wanted to. Came out very soft. Pretty good bounce, though, Murray. Very nice bounce. Fortunate to be there when you miss a fairway. Lee Westwood now, Roger. Playing off a downhill slope, a little bit below his feet. 150 yards. That lie that you talk about, Johnny, when the ball's below and you, those guys just hold up, Frank. Whoa! <laughs> if it does anything, it might go a little left or right. But a lot of guys pull the shot, don't they? Yeah, but when you sort of bow down, uh, Roger, to get to it, you know, when it's below your feet, and in the process of bowing down, the, the your shoulders come over the top of it a little if you don't watch out. He's looking out to the right, isn't he? Almost to the tower. Yeah. I think he tried to shape something in here a little right to left if he could. Yeah, he's looking way over here, right here. Well, this is staying a little right of the hole. But nevertheless, pretty good shot. Yeah, pretty much where he was aiming, I'd say. So two birdie putts remaining there for Tiger and Westwood. And I bet one of them makes it. We'll be back. Welcome back. We're at the seventh. That's Tiger, of course. And this is for Birdie and share the lead. Uphill all the way. Is that hard enough? Nope. No. No magic yet today. Not yet. Yet is the key word. This is another good opportunity for Ernie Els, who ha hasn't been able to get this putter heated up. That won't get there either. I mean, he could be just lighting it up today. A little left to remain at plus two, three back over to the ninth. And Ogilvy's tee shot. You see the yardage. 588 yards. Tees have been moved up some 24 yards. So it is reachable for a player of Ogilvy's length if he hits it in the fairway. Got that second bunker? Yep, second fairway bunker on the left. So he will have to lay up. And just earlier, up at the green, Jagus for 
to putt birdie. He needs to put on a charge right now. Well, there's a start. Birdie there moves him to plus three. We go back to seven. And Westwood now. Uphill to pull a little left, won't it, Roger? I think it was most likely, yeah. Started it left. This part every hole except for the first one, huh, Murph? <laughs> well, pars are not bad in U.S. Opens. Let's go to 13 T and Ernie Yells back on that 614 yard T, Johnny. Yeah, we're just going right down into that circle I made, and that makes a big difference, doesn't it, Murph? Uh, just uh, that. Uh, you gotta be careful you don't quick hook it. If you hit a left, it's about a 265 yard carry. Down the right, it's about 10, 15 yards shorter. Cannot reach the green of two, I don't believe. No, I don't think so either. Not enough wind today. It changes because the bunkers on the right are very difficult to, re to reach. You know, there's only two players, Bob, uh, in the last 11 groups that are under par today, and that's Ogilvy at one under, and Ells with all those misses is one under par for the day. Wow. Tiger for his par now. Okay. Drove it in the rough, but was able to make a par. 13 green now, Oliver Wilson for a birdie. We've had very few birdies here today, seven only. Oh, make it eight, make it eight. Oliver Wilson this year, four seconds on the European Tour. Good player. Up at nine, DJ Trahan's third shot. Yeah, the thick stuff, but the good news is Johnny's got a lot of green if he can get it to release up this slope. That was a good little and shot. That was a very nice shot, so he'll have that for three birdies in a row and a chance to get the two over par. Back to the tee at eight, championship leader by one, Lee Westwood. Eight iron in hand here. It's a blind green. The players can't see, but just that right side, that little sliver over here you can see. That's it. on a good line. There's a birdie. Hasn't made one all day. There's the shot of the day for him. He's been just hitting so-so shots. And that's the first really good one, huh, Roger? Yeah, I would say. Probably that's the first really crisp, really good shot he's hit. I mean, the other ones were good. but Well, yeah, but I mean, the, yeah. this one always looked good. <laughs> In his entire professional career, Tiger has lost only three Outright leads worldwide going into the final round. The last seven years ago, but one of those three was to Lee Westwood in 2000 at the Deutsche Bank in Germany, where Tiger led by two but finished tied for third. Tiger had the one shot lead over Westwood to begin this day. Then starting to pick up just a little bit and change directions. It was almost yeah. straight down a moment ago. Now it's felt like it's changed and going a little bit more from left to right. Three birdies at eight today. No hole has allowed fewer. It's a westerly wind, and that flag stick says it's dead down wind, Roger. Just exactly behind him. Westerly for Westwood. He might end up with a birdie here. Yeah, well, Tiger has been pretty good at answering people. Uh, this, too, on a great line. Oh, it doesn't carry. You think uh, a little unusual. A couple holes ago, Roger hits that shot right at it. Comes up way short of the green. Short of the green here. He maybe just not getting the power that he normally gets, and he hasn't adjusted. Ahead to nine. Trahan for his third birdie in a row. Punt that'll be ever so slightly to his right. Not uh, read that one very well. He said he's an East Coast guy. He's not used to putting on this Poena grass. Showed there. Go up to 11. The six foot five inch Robert Carlson from Sweden with a four iron, four back. 
right back into the wind. A very small target at 214 into the wind. Elevated T. And that's a very good line, and it's going to roll off onto the green. And it's coming back. Got some momentum coming off that friend. Watch out. Look at this. Most difficult par three through the three rounds here so far. If that would have hung up in the fringe, that would give you an idea how fast that chip would have been. Carlson's going to have a good chance to get within three. MetLife blimps have been providing event aerial coverage for more than two decades. And during this time, Snoopy and the blimps have become constant reminders of MetLife's dedication to providing guarantees for the if in life. Good view from the MetLife blimp down the coastline here in the San Diego, California area. Back down on the ground to Ogilvy at nine. Predicament does not look particularly good, Mark. No, uh, both players had to lay up, which is not good. First of all, Gary, and neither one hit a very good layup. Jeff's got a downhill lie over here, just short of the bunker. Pretty good angle back at the hole, but certainly doesn't want to go long or left. He's got 125 yards to the hole. It's to settle. It will not. Longish rough and uh, most of that about three and a half or so inches on the green. Very sticky. He hasn't hit a good shot on this hole, that's for sure. But you never know with him. <laughs> Liable to make a birdie. <laughs> you know. Back to eight. Tiger from the bunker. That's not an easy shot. Easy to leave it short. Hoist it way high. And just a little short. Beauty. That's where you want it. That's very nicely done. Back to nine. Rocco's third. Good for his trap draw. Well, uh, spin. Oh, upper shelf. Very firm. Both of those carry too far. That's all there was to it, huh? Yes. Given the conditions. Back to eight. And as Lee lines up this rare birdie putt at eight, look at his scorecard out with the bogey and then all those pars. So plus one on the day, a chance to get it back to an even round today and increase the lead to two. He's never been up by two. This is that little separation that can get sort of comfortable, especially if you can move it to three. Well, this one strikes my eye as kind of an awkward putt, Johnny. This is a little downhill. We'll move a little bit left or right. Almost looks like the hole's cut back toward the back part of the green. So it's, I think it provides a strange uh, optic look at it. He's been putting well, though. He's got a really smooth stroke going. I think you read it right, Roger. It was inside, though. It was just basically a straight putt, I think. Maybe it, it looked like it had to go right. I mean, it's just a very strange looking putt. That's a great opportunity lost. So all the even par guys, Woods, Ogilvy, Mediate, remain just one behind Westwood. Another look at this stroke. Let's see how straight this is. See where he starts it. Starts at left edge, left edge. Yeah, I guess it was a left center putt, but it surely wasn't outside left. It's one win for Westwood in the United States. Came 10 years ago on the PGA Tour stop in New Orleans. Longtime Ryder Cup fixture member of the last five European Ryder Cup teams has enjoyed great success over Tiger and the Americans in fact has played against Tiger in six Ryder Cup matches although not in singles but he's got a five and one record against Tiger in team play. This for par. How much to this Roger. No there's not John it'd be a pretty good up and in two but a wonderful walker shot really did didn't have the best of lies and on an uphill slope. I she had to carry that little rise. Yeah he did he did a very good job. In it. Should make this. And that's six cars in a row after the plus three start after the first two holes the Tiger who looked like he just might shoot himself way out of this thing early has settled down. And he's going to the par five that he's just been killing it out there way over 320 yards and over at 11 a guy who's dressed just like Tiger with a red and a black Carlson puts another red number up. 
And he moves it to plus two. And how about Carlson's performance and scoring on the back nine this week? He is eight under on the back, plus four on the front. Wow. Let's see if he can keep that up. Over to nine. Rocco's fourth. Drifting on by, so another tough par, but just prior to Rocco playing, this was Ogilvy's fourth shot. Very quick wrist break. Johnny plays these shots. Oh, yeah. To me, it, it almost looks like he decels the club into the grass, which is amazing. I know he does it very well, but it's tough to do around here with this sticky grass. And he putts the same way. Well, two important putts here. Gary. Well, we certainly are. You don't want to make a bogey on uh, a par five that's playing under par and reachable in two if you hit two good shots. Mark, this is not an easy putt. Uh, breaks considerably from right to left. Most of the players have not read enough break. No, Rocco's in a much better spot than Jeff. Yeah. A few players to miss it high. Boy, what a six that is. Well, we've seen what? How many shots so far? We haven't seen one good one. Out of this group. All right, we'll go back to the tee where we find Lee Westwood. Aiming it right down the right side. I'm probably going to play a draw. Gary, he's aiming right there. Yeah, wind coming from the right a little bit. Yeah, Just going up the right side. Really not drawing much. Exactly where he's aiming, huh, Gary? It's a beauty. Quickly to 13. And Ernie Yell's third there, Duddy. He elected to lay up. He actually had the driver out, toyed with going for it, too. Talking with Phil Rogers earlier in the week, he said it's very easy to catch shots fat on that Kakuya grass, and he was on the upslope, left it short. And at nine, Rocco with a good putt. Hard man's working far there, a little shake of the head. We go back to the tee. Tiger, can he hit a good one? If he does, he's got a chance to reach it in two. Three par fives the last ten holes, Gary, and he's played him eight under. This two be going down the right. Oh, he's hit it great here every day. Yes, he has hit it 360 yards here yesterday. Okay, take a break from this action. Just. A short time here. Let's go to Bob Costas for our Lincoln Financial NBC Sports Report. Welcome to the Lincoln Financial NBC Sports Report. Here's your host, Bob Costas. But I need help here, so we have enlisted Curtis Strange and Peter Jacobson to take a look at some of what's transpired on the front nine for the leaders. And let's begin with Tiger Woods, the leader coming in, his first shot of the day off the tee at one. It will be very telling what the knee does and this ball going way left of the people. Over what's trapped out. Not a bad lie, but it came okay. straight left. Hit some trees. And winds up double bogey. Winds up double bogey, not a good start. Now Tiger on number two again, missed the fairway again. You can see the pain in his left knee. He's grimacing on almost every shot. And this putt for par, which slips by, knocks this thing way by. Now he's three over after two holes. Here's Rocco Mediate, who had the lead for a good part of yesterday. His second at the second, and this will set up a birdie. And quickly, he's at two under. But then he gave them back with bogeys at five and six. And yeah. this for his par at six. Been the story of the week, though. The 2006 U.S. Open champion Jeff Ogilvie kind of quietly making his way up with a birdie on number five to get him to plus one for the championship. And again on number seven, uphill from 30 feet. Must have been an aftershock that made this fall in from Tiger's play on the back nine yesterday mm. to get to even. Look at him. He knows he shouldn't have gone in. He's since given one back, so he's at plus one. And the leader is Lee Westwood, the only guy in the red right now at minus one. This is his third on the par four fifth hole and he'll tap that in for a nice par. And you have said throughout that Westwood's consistency is what gives him a shot here. Nothing spectacular. Well I think that 
you live by the sword, die by the sword. And when Tiger and Ernie and all of them play out of the rough consistently, it will bite you. Lee Westwood is putting in the fairway consistently, putting it on the fairway, greens. You know, he's in good shape right now. Ordinarily, you guys were saying, if Tiger is at or near the top of the leaderboard, and it's the final round of a major, only a handful of guys have a shot. But now, given the fact that he's compromised by the injury, a bunch of guys have but a shot. I, I think he's the only player in the game today that can play poorly or play hurt and still be on the first page of the leaderboard, mm -hmm. which he is right now. But I think there's a couple of players that are flying under the leaderboard, most notably uh, Jeff Ogilvie and Rocco Media. They're playing well, and they have a chance. This is Arnie Ells out of the bunker. That's the fourth shot on the 13th hole. This is Westwood at the ninth. This will be his second shot. We just left Ells at the par 5 13th, so he's got a makeable putt for par. Nearly ran that in out of the bunker for the birdie. This is an awkward second shot because the players can reach this green in two, but you do not want to go long here because the green banks from the back to the front. So anything longer this green, chipping out of that matted rough, it's very difficult to stop the ball. As you can see, the pins on the back left of this green behind the bunker. So it's he's got to hit a draw. He's got to try to take this in from right to left and trying to stop a draw. It's, it's hard to do. I think he goes right up the middle of this green. That's the smart shot. This really the last birdie opportunity for a number of holes until he gets to the par 5 13. So you feel like you have to take advantage of this. Bad bounce in the bunker, long bunker shot, but he missed it where he had to miss it, Peter. He missed it to the right. That's right. He's, he's got an opportunity to get that up and down. Here's Ells for birdie, or rather for par, I'm sorry, for par at 13. And he's got it. Big putt there. You do not want to give one back on the par five. Two-time winner at two over and three back. Here's Tiger's second shot at the ninth. Uh, this is a little easier shot. He's got an iron. But as we've seen, when Tiger snaps that left leg and tries to hit the high draw, he winces. I've actually seen Tiger back off more shots this week than we've seen, obviously because of the conservative's left leg. He's got 267 to the hole right now. He began the day. A stroke in front of Lee Westwood. Now he trails Westwood by a stroke through eight. I really oh. think, though, oh, no because he's been in this position no, he before, got there right now. winning this championship twice already, he knows, only being one back, that if he pars out, very good chance of winning. Play smart. Make four here. Didn't win so on that one at all. What a shot. What a shot. Turn that grimace into a smile as he eyes an eagle possibility. Well, he's made three already this week. I don't yep. to, to four or five in a hurry, won't it? <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. We're going to take a short break here and return to Torrey Pines with more of the 108th U.S. Open in just a moment. While we were away, this was Rocco Mediate, second at the tenth, one behind. Uh, it was mentioned that maybe nine was the last birdie hole, but really nine and ten are birdie holes. Back to nine. And Westwood's third here at the par five. Ball a little below his feet and sitting down just a little bit, which I think is going to help him get the ball to have no spin on it and run it up to this back level. I think it kind of works in his favor here. Yeah, nicely done. Good call, Roger. So Westwood will have a chance to record his first birdie here at number nine for the week. We're going up to 14. And remember, today, drivable 267 yards. Snedeker just laid up, made birdie. He goes to plus three. Good, good championship for young Snedeker. 
And we pull back to the hole and Ernie else looks like he's going for it, Johnny. You don't want to go long. That's down in the ca canyon. It's a temptation. I just don't think you can resist the USG. It's like, <laughs> I'll throw you a bone, Dottie. So I think they got to take the bone. Well, in this situation, I don't necessarily disagree with it. He's not taking the driver. He doesn't need driver at this this yardage. Obviously, you don't want to quick hook it. Talked about going long. You don't want that either. And short right is no bargain. Short right is headed is right. right. Yeah, that's real trouble there, Dottie, because it, you short side yourself and that whole location just. Oh, man. Oh, that's down, down on the bunker, too, downhill. I think that just got in, and that could be really bad. Just barely on the downslope, I think. And over at the ninth, Woods with the lengthy putt for Eagle, and uh, this could take the outright lead. You see the most Eagles since they've been able to keep track of such things since 1992. Tiger has not given the gallery one good chance to cheer today. Get the Slow cut, moving to the right. Going to get there. No roars today, guys, so far. It's still early. <laughs> Well played hole though, huh? Yeah, very well played hole. Taking advantage of the par fives is what he does, Johnny. This would make him nine under par on the par fives for the week. There's a little roar. <laughs> finally a birdie for Tiger. He moves to one under par. One at the moment. Tied for the lead with Lee Westwood. But Westwood has a birdie putt there. He waits, we'll go to 10. This was a moment ago, third for Ogilvy, and that looks like it's sitting well down. It's buried. In the hole. He has enough green, he can just sort of chunk and run it, and he does a very nice job of it. A lot of wrist break. So here he is live for par. Will be not to drop two in a row, but that's exactly what he does. Ogilvy to plus two. He's just missed too many greens uh, this week, but he... he's been in three bunkers in the last two holes, Johnny. I mean, you just can't play the golf course that way. He's three nope. back tonight. And Westwood for his birdie to retake the lead. All right, nicely done. Wonderful up and down on the long bunker shot. Lee Westwood, the two under par. That was a real pressure putt, Gary. Yeah, it was. His Tiger just birdied. Up to 11. DJ Trahan's tee shot at the par 3, 217 a moment ago. He's plus two today on the round. Again, started off with four bogeys in the first five holes, played two under since. He's looking left. That is a beauty by Trahan. That's a good shot right there. I'll Chance say. to get within four. Back over to 10 for birdie. Rocco Mediate. And we know there is a certain interested individual watching back in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Talk to Arnold Palmer's uh, longtime assistant, Doc Giffen, just a few moments ago. And he says Arnold is watching in Latrobe. Rocco, born in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, just down the road from Latrobe. Arnie has always been his hero, and Arnie probably came out of his seat, maybe, with that one. To 11. And DJ Trahan moves it to plus two. And that moves him into the mix, doesn't it? He's got three birdies in the last five holes after that tough start. Has a different swing, but he really gets through the ball fast, and it's a good, good, strong move. All right, last group on the tee at the 10th. And Westwood, got to hit this draw, Johnny. Is that the shot shape you want? Yeah, draw is rides the wind. The winds are going, uh, you know, off the west, which uh, is a little bit right to left and some helping. And uh, to get the big distance, uh, that's probably the best shot down the right side. He's watching it a long time, so that means it's borderline. It looks pretty good. I think it's all right. Well, no, it no it's, it's not. In a, it's in a very bad spot right into the lip. 
That's a very bad break right there. Yeah, he doesn't know how bad that is. Here's how they played the back nine. Westwood has done better than Tiger, but Westwood right away in trouble. Those are the kind of breaks that can cost you major. You know, you hit a shot, you know, it'd be just normally a wedge into the green from the bunker, not too tough, you know, make par, but now it could be a real problem. I might be wrong, but it looks like it's not in a very good spot. Tiger's even more left than uh, Westwood was. He's going to go with the holder. He's not grimacing quite so much. Maybe he's figured something out. That's his little cut shot there, Holder. It's a good shot, good swing. That's the one I'd like to see him hit more often. Up at 11, Rocco coming off the birdie, one behind, four iron. So that's a perfect for his draw. Left hole location into the wind. Did he overhook it? Yes, he did, and that is really not good. That's uh, the best he can do from there is probably about 12 feet past. Ever-changing leaderboard at the U.S. Open Championship. Tiger and Rocco chasing Lee Westwood. Tiger Woods looks to be in really good shape at the 10th, Raj. Yeah, he's in great shape here. 144 left to the hole. Yeah, hole in the back right. And there is a slope left of the hole that plays toward the center of the green you can utilize to bring it down in the area of the cup. Is it visually sort of a comfortable shot or you got to little be, be a little careful? Roger? Well, you have to be careful, John. I mean, if you go at the flag uh, in line with it, the green starts to go away from you. If you get a hard hop, you could get it across the green here. He's thinking birdie. I know that. He just came off a of birdie, and this is a birdie hole when you hit the fairway. Hit it way up in the air, just a little left of the hole, cutting toward it. Right over the top of it. But a much different golfer. Since the plus three start, the first two holes, that might look closer uh, than it really is from where he's standing, huh, Roger? Uh, he can't really see. Arnie's third now. He left it in the bunker. Dottie Pepper said that first life was not that bad. That left for par. And Westwood's so close to that lip of the bunker, Raj. Yeah, but the bunker, I mean, they look not much of an issue. It's really not very high. It looks more intimidating, I'm sure, from the camera angle. That's from 129. That's where we got you down there. Okay. Well, if he gets it in the air, it won't be an issue. Let's put it that way. This one's come out low. He sculpted. This is out of here. Blue the green. Wow. Wow. A blade. That'll be a fun little pitch shot. Man with the lead. It's Cater Par. Up at 11, Ogilvy for birdie. He's in need of one now after back-to-back -back bogeys. He'll settle for par. Remain at plus two, four behind Westwood, but Westwood might come back to the field. Prior to that, this was Rocco who hit his tee shot left from the thick rough. Looks like he got some good club underneath it to put some spin on it. Yeah, I said the best he's going to do probably is like 12 feet from the hole, and I think he's put it about exactly 11 or 12 feet. So that's, now, that's about that was well done. It was brilliant, I thought, Johnny, because it was not a good lie over there, a downhill lie. So to get the ball up that high was tremendous. So if you weren't with us yesterday, we talked about how. Rocco is in love with this championship, wears the pins of U.S. Opens in the past on his hat. How's the feeling out there, Mark? Is it, uh, you know, just 
has been a little quiet today by yesterday's standards. No, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, this in this group, it's clearly a pro Rocco crowd, and there's been a lot of chance, but uh, there hasn't been any real exciting shots that I've seen yet. A qualifier. Last qualifier to win this championship, Michael Campbell, 05 at Pinehurst. Remember Steve Jones before that at 96. Rocco 13 putts to 10 holes so far. Did he save it? Yes. How about that up and in? He's got a peace sign for a belt buckle. I think he's looked pretty peaceful on that par save. 45 years old, I told him last night, I'm sure you know that if you win this, you'll become the oldest U.S. Open champion in history. He says, I didn't know that. You're kidding. <laughs> Over to 14. And Ernie for his par now. Good little downhill left or righter. Yeah. Right hold. So that's a good save. Disappointing, I know, but. You do have to save him here and there. I Ernie remains two over. I think where his drive was, he would have taken a four, though, because he tried to get tricky on a sand shot to knock it close, but it wasn't the kind of shot you were going to knock close. All right. Uh, Lee Westwood in the drop area, Roger. And as he drops this, let's bring in David B. Fay for the explanation here. Well, he had physical interference from the grandstand, and we instituted this back at Wingfoot. When you have physical interference from a grandstand around the putting green and you want to take relief, you must go to the drop zone. And it is a free drop. Yeah, it's a tough uh, free drop that's been miracle grow has been put on it, it looks like. That's some thick rough right there. Roger. Well, it all has settled in kind of deep here. You're right, Johnny. It's very thick and this is where the players and have walked off the green back here, so it's kind of laying over a little bit too. Green works away from him and right to left. Tough shot. Just shot out of there. So hard to judge it. Well, not sure what's going to happen the rest of the nine holes, but he'll look back at this hole and say, man, why did I do that? Rocco. Maybe at least tied for the lead with Westwood having his problems there. Off the tee at the long par 412. Again, Rocco not long, in fact, ranks 175, 75th spot in driving distance on the tour this year. It's just about 280 yards or so. And this week he's been hitting about 268, 270, 275 sometimes. Else off the tee at 15, Dottie. Oh, going with the driver wind out of the left. else is feeling that this championship might be getting away from him. But he's still just four behind and might be three behind after Westwood maybe dropping a shot here. Long putt for par and while he looks that over. Let's take a look at major championships by the decade through the years and we go all the way back to the 20s and start off with Walter Hagen who in the 20s won nine majors the 30s belonged to Gene Saracen the 40s Sam Snead Ben Hogan in the 50s Jack took over in the 60s and the 70s just before Tom Watson's time five majors for him in the 80s Nick Fano took four in the 90s Tiger 11 mm. already so I think he's uh, wrapped up uh, golfer of the decade and is on a very good start to golfer of the century I would think. On putt for par. So Westwood's going to drop his first shot Johnny since the first and Tiger gets a bit of a kick out of two shot swings to get the lead back. Tiger started the back nine last year at Oakmont. One behind as well, just like he started this back nine. He was behind Cabrera. By the way, Angel Cabrera did not make the cut at this year's U.S. Open. But how about Tiger putting for the lead? Outright lead. Well, a putt that uh, actually goes back uphill from uh, the back part of this green. And he should move up four or five inches to his left. And it just depends how firmly he chooses to hit the putt. 
Looks like he's settled in. He's starting to get back in his. It uh, was mentioned earlier that maybe he was rushing slightly. And it seems like now he's back into that groove that he gets into, Roger. So Westwood has a putt for bogey, so he's going to drop at least one and fall back to one under. And this birdie would put Tiger at two under on top by himself the way he started this final round. Well, he strung together four perfect shots counting the, the last hole, which he hasn't done all day. Hey, our chairman of NBC Sports, Dick Ebersole, read it for us, Dick. Put a mic on him, Raj. Bunch at the top now. He wanted that one badly. Rocco. Woods. And Westwood still with a little cleanup here for the bogey. Tiger's not amused by that miss. Trey hand with a tester here to remain at plus two. Three behind. He has played three under golf since the rough start for him in the first five holes. Plus one in his round today and Johnny there is the par three eleventh the most difficult par three through the first three rounds. It's difficult because of the raised tee. You got an elevation and then you're hitting right into the wind that comes off the Pacific. And that's a narrow target. It's not wide the green. By the time the ball gets on the ground into the wind, it likes to go left and right. Well, the big problem here is not distance control, but accuracy control. Roger. Well, agreed. And then if you want to miss, you want to miss it in front of this green. It would certainly be your easiest play. You wouldn't want to miss left. That's for sure. Well, like I said, Roger, he's hit four perfect shots in a row. Um, Pretty perfect by his standards. I don't think he would say they're perfect, but uh, they're pretty darn good. Let's see if he can continue. He seems like his knee is sort of settled in a bit. He hasn't uh, experienced the pain that we saw certainly early in the round, at least for a while. So uh, I haven't seen him wince too much or grimace too much. Yeah, the adrenaline has kicked in, or the endorphins have kicked in, but uh, the focus is back. Back nine on a Sunday at a major tied for the lead in his element. Three here. Let's watch this. It'll be a smooth one for him, probably. Sort of cut off ball through with a fade hold. You know, it's just a little left to the hole. Trying to cut. That was a heck of a shot. That was a beauty. That's going to come back. We saw this earlier. It comes all the way down within five feet. Gallery's going to go crazy. And there we have it. Tiger Woods on the prowl. Look, look at Tiger. <laughs> look at that shot. Tiger. Look at this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep coming, keep coming back. Well, he's back. He's not wincing. He's saying thank you very much. See if Westwood can answer. He's really been impressive in the fishbowl of this final pairing in a major championship on Sunday. Well, the last hole was surely not impressive. It's a four iron that started right. It is not drawing. It is in line with the bunker right. It a little bit. Tiger's putting the heat on him and he's melting. 
Up over at the 12th, just off the fairway, 221 up the hill for Rocco. Hold that line. Rocco part of the three-way tie at the moment with Woods and Westwood behind him. And maybe Tiger will be booey, but the fact that this 2008 season kind of began with a very long putt at the very hole he's playing right now in a season where Tiger has just been otherworldly with long putts at critical times. This was at the Buick here at Torrey Pines at the from 60 feet. He went on to win the PGA Tour title in late January by eight shots. Very next week at Dubai for birdie at 18 from 30 feet. Won it by one, needed it and got it. Later that month in Tucson at the Match Play Championship, three down with five to play against J.B. Holmes. Eagle wins the match, and he went on to win the title. Then in March, Bay Hill, 24 feet, 72nd hole. Tied Ben Hogan with that 24-footer to win by one. That was his last victory. And this sensational long putting, clutch putting would continue this week at Torrey Pines yesterday from some 65 feet for Eagle at the par 5 13. Perfect read, perfect speed. <laughs> Chipped in on 17 for birdie and then rolled this Eagle try in at 18 to put the exclamation point on an unbelievable back nine that gave him the lead by one. And we talked about it yesterday, Johnny, how all of these putts just seem reserved for Tiger <laughs> Woods in big moments, and he's, he's in position at 11 to take the lead in this championship. It's not over, folks, but uh, Tiger looks like he's starting to get the look. He's uh, focused. Uh, even beyond the knee pain, and it seems like uh, he's starting to hit those shots. That's five almost perfect shots in a row now, counting nine, 10, and 11. All right, Westwood second, Roger. Ball just on a slight down slope. Should have enough green to work with here, certainly playing back uphill. I don't think he's hitting yet, Johnny. That's a good shot there. Really good. Missing green zone. He's got to change that. Those things catch up with you. Up ahead at 12. Rocco mediate long birdie try back at the hole. And Mark, you're there. Puck with a little bit of pace to it downhill, downwind. Sure, he's hitting the hearing those roars behind him, huh, Mark? No doubt about it. He heard him yesterday too, didn't he? Mediate's going to get by this 12th with a par. He's going to remain under par in the championship, even on the day. Back over at 11. Maybe this will be the first significant Tiger roar of this Sunday. This to take over the lead in the U.S. Open. And continue the quest on Jack Nicholas for major number 14, perhaps. Roger. Well, this putt, uh, Johnny, from about four and a half feet, I would say, got a little bit of motion to the left in it. I would think it would have to turn the left, certainly as softly as he's going to have to hit it. But I don't think it does a whole lot. Well, he's taking his time now. I think that's good. I think it um, total focus. Like his father said, no one will be tougher than he is mentally. He will never even encounter anyone as tough as he is. That has come into play big time this week, hasn't it? Is for the lead by himself. The field's going to quiver if he makes this. Would you 
expect it anything else. Tiger, after a plus three start, the first two holes has birdied two out of the last three and has taken charge of the back nine of this U.S. Open. This has been some kind of week for Woods. Began with a super pairing with Mickelson and Adam Scott on Thursday and Friday. And the gallery's record setting continue to swarm around him for a glimpse of history. On a golf course where he has won six times, if Tiger was to win this U.S. Open, he could become the first player to win seven times on the same course in the history of this game. Yeah, he trade the first six, I guarantee you for this seventh. Here he is at the 12th, this long par four. And this fairway is a ribbon into the wind. And he's had trouble with this hole. Of course, everybody's had trouble with this hole. It's the hardest hole on the golf course. If he hits a fairway, he will not bogey, but if he doesn't, he needs a good break. As you can get some bad lies here. Third longest par four in U.S. Open history from this back tee, 504 yards. This plays the longest in U.S. Open history. The other one plays downwind. This one plays into the wind. This is almost a baby par five. Let's see what shot he wants to hit. Looks like he's going with a cut. Little baby cut. This ball hooking down the left hand side, right along the edge. Well, that's a good shot. Tiger played a number of uh, public facilities growing up, including Torrey Pines here. The reason why I said he was going to cut it because he was aiming right where he hit it. So. Beautiful there. Watch that left knee and left foot though. You, the foot is taking so much torque. Do you see that right there? Just up on that toe like he did when he was a kid. Uh, Westwood to try to answer. He's getting the full tiger force right now. He used to match him. Hook left. Tony. Going at the bunker on the left hand side. That's not good. That's not good. So far in Tiger's history, no one has been able to beat him when he's had at least a share of the lead. 13 of 13 in that fashion in major championships. And the putt we just saw roll in at 11 means that Tiger Woods has the lead by himself in yet another major championship on a back nine Sunday. Took you to 10.30 Eastern time last night for the third round and just past seven o'clock Eastern time out east, four o'clock out here on the beautiful west coast of California. Join another beautiful U.S. Open championship. The Westwood is in the bunker at the long par 4 12th. Roger. And 220 left of the hole, but then not an issue with the lip in front of him and the bank in front of him. So it's no more than a nine iron, I wouldn't believe, that just to get it out in the fairway. Layups in the fairway, don't you, Johnny? Yeah, he's just going through a rough patch right now. Uh, you know, he made the good save on the last hole, but uh, 10, 11, and 12 now have been real scratchy. You have those moments in majors and in this championship. Let's yeah, see, could if happen. Can see if he can get through it. It could happen to Tiger the next couple holes. You never know. Roger. Tiger now 182. The best of angles. It Preferred it a little further right in the fairway, but uh, still can shape something right to left. Want to keep this ball a little right of the hole. Certainly do not want to miss left here, John. The good news is, you know, he's sort of shooting away from the trouble. You know what I'm saying? He's sort of 
Not playing towards it from the right side. It opens up and it plays towards that left bunker. What's it dead into the wind? It feels like it's almost directly into the wind right now. Less than a quarter of the field he's has got, hit this green in regulation today. He's got a good line. I think that Tory Pine in the background. It's just a wonderful line to play the left side of that tree. Just aim right in this area somewhere and just play a little draw. Uh, that to me is the. Let's turn the radio, the mic down there. We can hear the mic there on that truck, please. The classic shot, I would think, Roger, yeah, just to play it. Yeah, yeah. Five, ten foot draw in there. Keep it away from that left bunker. Right, that's the shot shape, John. Just not turning, it's at the right side of the green. Hey, a lot of guys will take that. A lot of guys, most guys haven't even hit the green. Just didn't draw, he just kept the face square. 13. And back in the fairway, Rocco Mediate will be laying up here on the par five. Today, 614 yards. Good yeah, that should be great. Almost everyone is laying up down in the bottom, and they're having a terrible time getting the ball to the hole. Uh, so many are hitting it in the bunker from there and or short. Well, Murph, speaking of a terrible time, we're going to show you some shots on tape for Bernie Ellis at 15. This was his second. Oh, man. Strong as he is. And then his third. Else after making the birdie at the 10 chipping in had crept to within three shots of the lead. That was his third right by that tree. huh? And then up ahead on the green. This was a double bogey putt for else. So after staying at plus two after that chip in birdie at 10 to get within three else takes a triple falls to plus five. And is now seven behind Tiger with three to play. To 14. And over at the short four now, Robert Carlson chose to lay up. It is wedged to this position. He taps it in, so that's two plus two for Robert Carlson. Third here for Westwood after blasting out of the bunker, Raj. 90 yards left to the hole. Let's see if he can scramble again after the bunker save at 11. This is a pretty big exchange right here, Roger. You don't want to give Tiger a two shot lead if you're playing with him. Looked it pretty well. Might need to get down just a shade. You ever seen better fairways to hit off of Roger? This is like hitting off one of those doormats you can buy. This is unbelievable. The ball just sits straight up in the air. Yeah, I would have liked to play these fairways in about 73. 13. And a moment ago, DJ Trahan hit his shot and drew it back down the green to this position. Well, watch this. Well done, DJ. He goes to plus one. There you see fourth position right now. Mentioned it a little while ago. Tiger with six wins on this golf course at Torrey Pines in the Buick Invitational, the long-running PGA Tour event, including the last four in a row. Also has won six times at Firestone. Jack and Sam Sneed have also the only other players to win six times on the same course. So if Tiger wins today, he will stand alone on that list. For most guys, that's a career. Tiger six says, wins. He says, I feel so comfortable here. I can read the greens, even though they're a little bouncy, step, but I still read them well. It's just one of those things when you feel you've got a, a great feel for a golf course, and that has been the case for Tiger at Torrey. In fact, they had joked locally here that they call it Tiger Pines. <laughs> He's been so dominant here. Roger, this isn't exactly a scary putt, is it? No, it's not. It's got a little turn to the left in it, and uh, you know, he just hasn't made one away from the hole yet today, you know? 
It's almost like he's due. You know, this will finish as the fourth toughest hole in the U.S. Open in the last two de decades. This 12th. Rocco with 13. Shooting straight up the hill there, Mark. And all the way from the bottom of the hill. Good looking shot here. Beautiful shot. First guy to get it there. I'm going to tell you. Now he's having some real fun, Mark. You got to hit that shot to appreciate how great that is. That's a little tiny spot up there. Very tiny and hard to see. You can't see that. Over to 14 and we take us now on 267 yard par four just a moment ago. The people like it. Watch this. Bounces it right in there. The whole location right behind that bunker for a reason. And Tiger will have to make a decision when he gets there. Westwood for par. To remain one under. Big putt for him, breaking to the left. Just didn't break. Roger slid right and just stayed there for some reason. A bit of a trick putt. Two bogeys in the last three holes for Westwood, who coming off that ninth had a two shot lead after a birdie and a one shot lead there over Tiger at the turn and mediate. But now he's fallen to even two back. The field averaged 4.6 on this hole, so it's just a brutal hole. And it's nothing tricky about it. There's no water, there's no fall off in a barranca, there's nothing. It's just a pure, tough hole. Talked about Tiger's history on this course, won the 91 Junior World here, the boys' 15 17 division, by three shots over his friend Chris Riley. So many great PGA Tour stars have won that prestigious junior world on this golf course. Tiger won a total of six junior world titles in that championship. And the one here contested at Torrey, and he's got the lead by one over Mediate as Westwood falls two back. I think Rocco threw out a signal himself with that big roar. I think Tiger knows maybe Rocco is made a birdie. And a quick look at the leaderboard. Tiger began the day. One shot leader over Westwood. He's got the one shot lead over Mediate and two better than Westwood. DJ Trahan's latest birdie has gotten him to within three. Camilo Bijegas just drove the green at 14, but he's coming off a couple of bogeys. Sergio Garcia plus six through 15. And speaking of Bijegas, over at 14, Murph. For Eagle on the par four. Had one today, Jesper Parnovic. Oh, yeah. you gotta hit it. Wow, oh, you have to hit that. Can't leave an eagle short. There's a rule against that. Mm. Should we go to David Fay for that? Oh, makes a <laughs> We're 13 now, and Ogilvy for a birdie. Short as well. He remains plus two. Well, that's Snoopy three. Flying up there and covered over 20 years and almost 70 events a year. What a view up there for Snoopy. How about that? Look at that right down on the top of 13 green. Rocco to tie the lead. Trying to find a little break here, Murph, but there isn't much, I don't think. No, Maybe there's... inside left. Yeah, I wouldn't put it out of the hole, definitely. Took a deep breath there. Oh! Oh, he started at center to right center. And it got away. That Ocean pull is very real. Such a Cinderella story going on if he makes that. Mm. Opportunity missed. Not just got midnight yet, though. No, it's still there. But... 
And back on the tee and Tiger's ready to play. I have a feeling the left knee is going to get some work out here, Murph. <laughs> Boy, you hit it uh, 80 yards right yesterday. Tracer and watch it go across the canyon here from the new tee. You see Tiger aiming out to the right. Pro Tracer. Oh, that was nailed. <laughs> Look at him, he's trying to help him. Doing an Arnold Palmer fall bit. through. He's yeah. giving that Arnie. <laughs> Arnie's watching back in the trove. How do you like that, Arnie? <laughs> hey, Arnie taught us all kinds of things, didn't he? Yes, he did. Lee Westwood now. This is a three shotter, isn't it, Murph? For everybody, yes, pretty much. Yes, Maybe it not is. Tiger, if he took his two biggest, but you might try to run it up the hill a bit if you if you want it, but it gets so narrow up there. Oh. Right down the middle. It's only 25 yards on the layup down in the fairway, so. It's all the width there. You see, by side that by side, side we are. Wow. Well, that's being nice to your fellow competitor. You know, he's got a bad knee. You don't want to outdrive him. Different hole now back there at 614. Tigers made two eagles here. Great moments in golf on NBC. Fast putt. Looking good. Round out this decibel level. Over at 16, Garcia now for birdie. Had to back away with that Nicholson roar. This one's going to turn a little left. Yes! Oh, man, they're going in from everywhere. <laughs> Tiger Woods halfway to the slam and his second U.S. Open championship. You're watching NBC Sports, home of golf's best. What a scene in the twilight back in 2002 when Tiger won this championship the last time. Future U.S. Open sites as we go back to the black next year. Another daily fee facility. And for tickets to the 2009 U.S. Open Championship at Beth Page, you can visit www.usga.org slash tickets. Yeah, and you better visit in the next 24 hours. It'll all be gone in one day. 14. Trey Hans second on the par four. He said last night, I've not been in contention in a major, so this is my big test. And he's right there. Rocco waiting on the tee to make a decision. Do I go? Do I not? You don't want to miss it left of the green. That's Canyon, Overs Canyon. And the interesting thing about this hole today, it's playing over par. This is not really that much of a birdie hole today. It's playing 5.1, but I think a player has got to feel he's got to play this hole, the next hole one under otherwise you're going to lose spots. I, I think Curtis Strange wanted to say something about his feelings about this uh, place in the championship this time and uh, what the players need to do or what Tiger needs to do. Westwood second Roger Malby you're there. You got 292 left of the hole here Murph 277 to carry the front. That's a long carry. Interesting, a little bit of breeze helping. Uh, interesting play here rather than lay up. This will be all he's got. That's as and, hard as he can hit it, Roger. And then some, yeah, and he's pulled a big pull, yank left. Watch out here. There is oh, ice man. plant over there. There is ice plant. You're you know, exactly right. We've talked about Kukuya, but left of this hole has always been ice mm. plant, huh, Roger? I've been I, over there. Ice plant's worse than Kukuya. <laughs> if yes. it's in that stuff, you can add one. <laughs> 
Curtis yeah. Strange, you have a thought? Well, Murph, I think it's a big hole. And right now in the, in the tournament, Tiger doesn't have to make birdie because he has the lead. But I think it's very important that he does make birdie because we do have birdie opportunities in 14 and 18 coming in with coming in with Rocco Media and Lee Westwood and DJ. And you know, as they say about the, the lesser team, you let them hang around a little bit and they're going to make a three on you right at the at the buzzer. That's right. I don't think I like this club, Johnny Miller. Well, I don't know if he, these guys realize yeah. that the hole was playing over par today. This isn't necessarily a hole that you want to bring in a big number because there's a lot of trouble up there if you don't play it correctly, Murph, as you know. This is, that's a tough hole location. But, uh, you know, he's got an extra gear nobody else has, so watch out here. Oh, this is pulling. This is further left than Westwood. Oh, how about this? How about this? Double ice plant. How about this? Well, Rocco Mediate, can you hear this? And Rocco's pulling out the three wood. Well, he's going to have to get all of this one to get it to the green. The wind is picked up. Boy, he hit it hard. That's the good news then because he does not want to go long. Just got it a little left, probably in the bunker. And I'm telling you, we go back to 13. You got yep, two guys that are going to have trouble finding their ball. You watch. My goodness. Well, I, I doubt they'll find their ball down there. Tiger and Westwood. Rocco, not a bad position right there. They're in the hazard. They'll have to drop. But watch the line as this takes off. And there it goes, swooping out over those trees. Not happy. Out to 13. And the stare of Tiger Woods looking at his ball. Roger Malby, what do you think? Well, it's not in the hazard. He's dropping the ball now, and he's dropping it in very heavy stuff. So I, I, I thought he was standing there staring down at the lie of his ball, which I couldn't see. I didn't realize that he was ready and preparing to drop. He didn't even really search much for his ball. He just said, that's it. I'll drop point. Yeah. That's what I thought when I saw the, the look. He was evidently studying where he wanted to drop, wasn't he? Roger, with Westwood going to the ice plant, what do you think of that uh, decision to play a dry, uh, three wood from there instead of, there's really no great place to hit it. He couldn't reach the green, I don't think. Well, there was only one great place to hit it, which was a long way to go. But now this very thick here, extremely thick rough. Impossible hole location almost. Just on the back of the green. That's for par. Well, that's going to bring a lot of people into play there, uh, Bob Murphy, they're, instead of a birdie. They're helping them out, aren't they? That is a big difference. Up ahead at 14. Ogilvy laid up. He did not choose to go for the green, trusting his wedge, but he put it in the intermediate cut and couldn't get the, the spin on the ball that he wished. Rocco now. Playing Bob. his second there, Mark. Well, Bob, this is one of the few times I've seen the ball really sitting cleanly in the bunker. He is playing it back into the wind, so it's not that hard a shot. <laughs> Rocco not going away. That's for Birdie. New leader, maybe. I mean, at Oakmont last year, they had a par three that was 300 yards, and this hole, 267. What a challenge. What fun. Westwood now after his drop, Roger. Well, this is just not very good stuff over here. How far left of the ferry were those two shots, Roger? About 25, 30 yards. This comes out lower and hotter than Tigers. Just like that, that's, uh, that's giving away some shots, I must say. Game today played differently, isn't it, Johnny? We used to lay yeah. up for sure. I thought Steve Williams could have been a little bit more forceful or helped Tiger out a little bit. I thought I, today is the first time I've been able to say 
Tigers hit some clubs that I would not have wanted to hit if I was caddying for him. The driver at number two, where he got a bogey. This second shot here, there's no reason for it. I mean, it's there's several tee shots he could have hit different flights. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the knee or whatever, but uh, he, you know what he can hit and what he wants to hit could be two different things. I mean, he had 291 to get up all the way to the hole, and uh, I know that he's capable of hitting a three wood that far, but. My goodness, how many wedges has he hold from 120 down there in the valley? And maybe he just wanted to put it in the bunker or something, Roger. You think maybe that just he's figuring, well, with my short game, just give me somewhere in the bank up there and I'll get the job done. Right. I think maybe even get on the bank on the left hand side and give himself an angle uh, is all I can imagine because the odds of him stopping that ball on the green with that club from the fairway with the three would be slim and none. Yeah. Tiger looks that over. We'll go up to Rocco. This to go to two under. Certainly can't be more than two feet. Yeah. Yeah, Rocco's fans are happy about that. If he wants to stay calm, look no further than his belt buckle, Murph. Peace sign. And Rocco could use a little serenity right now, but he's not going to get that from the fans who have been cheering him on loudly all week. And back to Tiger for par now. Downhill slicer here. And what a par it would be. Oh. They made one here for the history books yesterday for Eagle. That one. Not as good. Misjudged. That's the first bogey and 36 tries as a professional on this hole he's ever made. Guys, never made bogey here. And he's made a lot of birdies and uh, some eagles, as we know, two this week. He's not done yet. Be interesting to get in his head right now. Love to know what he's thinking. Westwood's fifth shot, Roger. Yeah, a little chip here from just off the fringe, and it's quick coming this way. Definitely make it work. At the speed. It's going the wrong direction on the back nine, Bob. Absolutely. Made one par in four holes. Part in the back nine. And that was a great save on the one he made. Big decision coming up now. And my goodness, if they both tried to go for this green, you'd just have to believe they're both going to try to go to for 14 at 267 yards. It's for a bogey. This has a pretty good pull to the right. If you're not careful, we saw Rocco mediate just a moment ago miss it. He thought it was straight and it went right on Murph. Yes, it did. Three more speed. That went in nicely. So after two incredible eagles, Tiger makes a bogey here at the 13th. Surprising. Up ahead of 15, second for Trahan. Dottie. They have a very lengthy wait. Uh, Hunter Mahan is still waiting on a ruling. He has hit his tee shot into the left hazard. I still like that clock. It's solid one. In the meantime, Rocco. The sole championship leader by one, waiting back on the tee. It's a holy double bogey yesterday to fall out of the lead. This from the neighborhood of 180 yards, it is a seven iron. Trying to stay short of the hole. And Go! Way back. Go! Go! Trahan talking to it. So the teaching pro, Don, when he caddied for the 2000. One senior open, and he's already won a USGA championship. 
And as you look at Rocco Mediate, let's check in with Tim Rosefort. Dan, I called his uh, college coach earlier today, Charlie Matlock from Florida Southern. Charlie really believes that Rocco wouldn't be here if he didn't get a sponsor's invitation by Jack Nicholas to play in a memorial tournament. 69 on Sunday there, sixth place finish gives him some momentum going into the qualifier. One over, though, in the morning at the Scarlet Course at Ohio State. He has to go five under in the afternoon with a birdie at 17 to get an 11 man playoff for seven spots. All the guys in that playoff, Dan, are under 30 years old. Rocco, after they hit off the first tee, says, come on, children, let's go. He gets down there, his ball's 30 yards behind everybody. He ends up sticking a nine iron, making birdie and advancing. One other thing about Rocco, he's now coached by Eddie Marins, a little pro from Bel Air. Eddie's working with him on short game rhythm and playing the game. I think we've all seen that Rocco knows how to play the game. Rocco's also on the board there to become a new member at Bel Air. Rocco's right. going to Hollywood. <laughs> let's go to 14. Yeah, let's set this hole up. 267 yeah. yards. The USGA's intention to make the players make a choice. Do I try to go for this green? And Johnny Miller, you don't want to miss it left and you don't want to miss it long because that is a down into the canyon. What a location right in behind that bunker, Johnny. And so you don't want to miss it right either. <laughs> it's a great a setup for Sunday, isn't it? It right. really is because you've got to think a lot. You've got to say, Man, bring it out, one. Limitations. I got it. Steve Williams. Take a look at what's behind the green. And that's all shaved there. If you stood there on the edge of the green and dropped a ball, it'd go right down in the, the canyon, which is a hazard. That left bunker is a good spot where Rocco is. Excellent spot. Very wide. That opening up in front of the green is some oh, 10, 12 yards wide. So. Shot. What's he doing there, Roger? It looks like he's pulled an iron from the bag, so this a layup. I think he just doesn't trust uh, where he could hit it right now, the way he's feeling. It might be, but uh, again, it's hard to imagine that he would have tried to knock it on the last green and not right. this one. This is an easier shot than the last one was, in my estimation. Get in the hole! Well, this ball just, going up to right. Just wants to take out the big number, I would think. You know, this one is going to make far option birdie. Not, a, not an easy angle there because of the hole location right behind this bunker. Right now, baby. Come in with some kind of cut shot and work it into the hole, possibly. Lee Westwood has a fairway wood, Roger. Same one he hit at the last, so at least consistent with his thinking. Yeah, like 55 players have gone for it and about 22 have laid up. So uh, the ratio is that the hole is uh, very tempting. Pressure after the way he hit the last three wood. Tiger ready now, and this is a real important shot here, Roger Malby. 101 yards to the hole here, and it, yeah, you're right, Murph. Yeah, this is a, an opportunity to get it close, but he's got to hit a heck of a wet shot here. Hey, quiet, please. Thank you. Tell how important it is. He backs off. Backed off a number of times today. You see the whole location right over his shoulder there. Here's a good down a little bit. Choked down on that. 
club, but he hammered it a little low. Very makeable. Alan Hiller, you'll get it to the hole, that's for sure. All right, Rocco on the tee at 15. He has had a five or six minute wait and he paced back and forth across the tee 15 times, I'm going to say. He needs to hit it right down this ribbon with a draw. It was the left rough that started a double bogey yesterday, Johnny. He started left of the ribbon. And that's why it's left. Oh, it's I'll tell you what, he got a very good bounce. Tree. Yeah, he did, Rob. Hit the, the path. I don't know where it is. Long looking grass there, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's better than it looks from here. Maybe past all this stuff. He said maybe it passed all this stuff. And I got by that tree, Rocco. That's one good news. Another look from above. Cart path. Takes a huge hop. Yeah, it gives them more distance. Goes up into that eucalyptus, then drops right there. You can see it right in this area. Well, that may be the kind of break that Rocco needs to win his first major. You know, you look at the board as we shift over to 14. Only Tiger among those players within three shots of the lead has a major championship, and he's won 13 of them. No one else has ever gotten it done with a heat on in a major. Very important too, Dan, because the the mental mental side of the game is what we talk about in these U.S. Opens. It leads you to make choices sometimes, which everybody else questions, such as the last hole. Westwood now for for a two. There you see three bogeys this night. Yeah, this putt uphill it should. Dug a little to his left, shouldn't it, Murph? Yes, it will. Putt that we're uh, not seeing up to the hole. A lot of putts short. Tiger's putt as well. They're leaving it short coming down the hill. Good. Up to 15 quickly. DJ Trahan to get within two, Dottie. Very slow putt up the hill. Right, he's going to stay at plus one within three of Rocco's lead. Just took a quick look at the board and he knows exactly where he stands as well. His father, Don Jr., DJ named after him. Playing here on Father's Day, trying to win this championship. Back over to 14. Really tough hole location here. This putt is going to be a difficult one as well. And we'll go back to 15 first, please. All right, Mark Rolfing, have you had a chance to look at Rocco's lie at 15? I have, to, uh, Dan. It's a terrible lie in the left hand rough. Um, I would think Rocco's on his way over here right now. He's about 20 yards away, but I would think he has to consider laying up. The only way he could get the ball toward the green would be to hit a hook and out of this thick stuff. I'm not sure he can do it. OK, back to 14. And Roger, do you have a look? You have a decision here. Well, you would think the ball would want to try to peel to the right here, Murph. Mm -hmm. And it's really not much downhill. There's almost a little slope coming out of the bunker in the front right of the green. It's almost going back uphill a little bit. What have you seen, Murph? I'm seeing this putt left short. It's not going to get there either. It's like that. It's a good call, Bob. Uh, it's just a hard putt to read, and as Roger said, it seems to be coming out of that bunker, fooling the players. They just feel like it's going to be lightning from back there. <laughs> a little bit of talking to himself there from Tiger. Yeah. That was not an enjoyable hole for him. He was hoping to play the last two holes by his standards, one under with falling off a log, and he played him one over. That's a two shot difference. Yeah, we've had 24 birdies here. Westwood now for a birdie. 
think he knows already this is a little slower than what he was thinking. Roger. We'll Rocco real quick here. All right, from that rough, which Rolf described. He's going to try and move it about 150 yards as well. Rocco's been pretty disciplined all week about when he gets into trouble, gets out, and moves to the next shot. Try to get it up and down from there. Try to save par. And back over at 14. Lee Westwood, same time that Rocco was hitting for birdie. Well done, good play. Moves Lee back to even par, two shots behind Rocco. Boy, did he need that, Murph, after yeah. three bogeys in the last four holes. Great tee shot, beautiful tee shot. As we move over to 16, good look at the hole location. Back left corner of the green. R3, 192 right. yards. Jay Trahan on the tee, and what a comeback for him. Four over par after his first five holes. Not unexpected for a youngster in contention uh, in a major for the very first time, but he's played the last 10 holes in four under par. Dottie to get it to back to plus one. And Gary, this is a five iron backed up once. And this is headed to the right toward the center of the green. And just chase through, and that's going to leave an awkward pitch. There's a spine in the green he's going to have to deal with. Get up and down. We go back to 15. Rocco from the fairway with his third. It's a shot of 84 yards and not a particularly easy one. Hole location up on the What's shelf the in the back Total's of the screen. Total 85. Back in. A little bit back in here. Playing 90 ish. Where do we want to land this? 80 ish. So I don't think it's playing. There's not 10 yards of wind there. Okay. I think it's. Well, no, it's okay, right. I got you. <laughs> Rocco likes to move the conversation along. Yep. Oh, he's been announcing everything to me pretty much, Dan. It's amazing. Doesn't like standing still, he loves to chatter. He's been a golf announcer in bare feet, he's broadcast. Very smooth downswing. This one's back there. It's a stop. Huge roar for Rocco. He's got the lead. But the one can he stay there in the U.S. Open. Masters, remember that his back blew up on him and he faded big time. He's in it right now. 15 Tigers second. Well, he's backed off this tee shot twice. <laughs> That's going down the right side. This is going to miss right. Well, right. Mm. Again, he's outside the ropes. He's there almost every time he plays this hole. Up ahead on the green. Thought the roar you heard on the third was good. If this goes down to stay one up. He has had trouble, Johnny, with the left to right putts. If you remember, he missed it at number four. Missed the real close one at 13. And this one, all of them have been left to right. Well, it yesterday, bogey today. And all of a sudden, wow, Tigers tied. It's interesting. There was, there's been 12 rounds under par today, some really good ones, but in the last nine groups, not one player is under par now. Over to 16. And DJ Trahan second, an awkward little chip. Got to go up and over a ridge right there. Works hard to the left and slow. DJ Trahan's going to have a little work left. He's going to stay at plus one. You know, you'd have to say, uh, you'd think in the last nine groups, the guys are playing the best. That's why they're in the last nine groups, but it's just that open pressure, the chance to win the United States Open. It just closes things down for players. Well, it wasn't long ago when Tiger as a kid put up on the wall the track record of Jack and the 18 major championships at his home nearby in Cypress, California. So Jack with the most top 10 finishes in major championships, Tiger well down on that list uh, with 28. 
So what would Tiger have to do? He'd have to finish in the top 10 in every major championship through the year 2019 to equal Jack in that department. That just speaks to the longevity of Jack Nicholas. Well, Tiger hasn't played well the last two days, but he, those Eagles held him in there, and uh, he's tied for the lead now. Oh, oh. that was always left. Oh, man. Jay Trahan with a short miss at 16. Almost a plus two, and he off the lead. And not happy. Johnny, uh, with Tiger and Rocco now tied for the lead at one under, do you got a gut feeling uh, as we come down the final few uh, holes here at Torrey? Well, you know, it's hard to believe that Rocco might win the United States Open. You know, he, this is 138 starts since his last win six years ago, and he's won tournaments like Greensboro and ones like that. And the uh, bottom line is there he's got a chance at this age to, and the good news for Rocco, if you're pulling for him, is that 16 is a draw, 17 tee shots a draw, the pins back left, draw, 18, you hit it down there, and the green, the green opens up with a draw. So he's sitting there like he designed these holes for his game. A qualifier trying to win a U.S. Open. And let's get a report on uh, Tiger's tee shot at 15. Roger, doesn't look too bad. Well, it's a little cuppy, and there's a little bit of tall grass behind it, probably of more importance. A tree? It's sitting in a bit of a depression, and there's a little bit of a yeah, small tree ahead of uh, Johnny, right directly in his line to the green. Uh, the hill will be a factor that he'll have to get it up across. He's left himself 180 yards, so uh, can he hit it's a, little, a bit of an issue. Can he hit a little squeeze fade between the tree left and the tree in front of him? That would be an option. He could try to play that shot. Uh, but the ball, like I say, is just sitting in a bit of a depression. Just down just a little bit. So let's, we'll see if he can make really good contact with it. What I'm saying is, is the lie is not saying to go the highway. It's, it's saying to go the punch fade way. Uh, yes, I would think. And then and if you hit that low cut, then maybe you can just get it into the Just be real at the shot, please. But he's definitely looking out to the right. He's not looking for the cut. Well, then he's going to go up and across if that's his choice. How many guys could pull this off from this lie? Yeah, he's looking up and around and over and make the cal gallery go crazy. All right, quickly over to 16 for Rocco's tee shot. With a five iron. He missed it left yesterday. Yeah, this one looks like it's headed left as well, Mark. Oh, left of where? Left of the hole in one. <laughs> left of maybe where he was trying to hit it. Like that dome is rough, Gary. Yeah, that's some deep stuff back there. And Johnny, you talk about the open pressure. Yesterday, he hit 15 of 18 greens. Today, he's only hit seven out of 16. Down goes Rocco. As we go back to 15. And Tiger backed off and now ready to go. That ball did it's nestle. Well, he's got the face open. Well, that is maybe a high cut. A little movement. What do you think, Roger? That looked like he was going with the high cut. Well, that would be the shot if you're trying to get it close. That would be the shot of choice. I mean, at first he was looking right, but uh, you know, it's setting up. He was playing the shot that will go this way. Face is open. Really high, really right, short and right. This is going to be, that is no good. I just don't understand why he didn't run it up this way. You know, he could have hit that little squeeze fade and run it up the green short of the hole and run it up, I mean, short of the green and run it onto the green. Why do you have to do air mail? didn't get any power. You can see how open that club face is now. Just toe is dead down. And then when he comes into it, he leaves the face open to hit it high, high fall through. See the high, high fall through if you want to hit the ball high. 
Well, we have both the leaders, Woods and Mediate, in the rough. And now Westwood at even par, just one back in good shape here, Roger. This from 177. He's shaping this ball a little right to left, just a little left to the hole at the center of the green. That's a make or cut. Who knows, in a few moments, we could have all three of them tied at even par. This is getting tougher and tougher to judge. Tiger looking for the 14th major. Our East Coast viewing audience out there on the East Coast, 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Pacific out here. As we continue with this prime time Father's Day like, telecast. It's like a SOS pad right here. Here, <laughs> Rocco. <laughs> SOS pad, Gary? That's what he was saying. Gary, he has had at least three of these today. Very similar shots, just over the green to a back hole location with not great lives. Yeah, headed at number five, left it short, made a bogey, headed at number nine. I'll take it at number five. All right. Yeah. Good news, he doesn't have to land it very far, does he? <laughs> no, he does not. Just needs to carry the ball some four or five feet in the air. I think he can do it. Oh, get in! Oh. That's well done. That was a big swing, wasn't it? Yes, well, he, uh, he previewed it for us, didn't he? He said it was like a Brillo pad. It was going to offer some resistance. Go back to 15. What kind of Brillo pad does Tiger have, Roger? Well, he's going to have to play one of those monster floppers. Green running away from him on this angle. Uh, this is a heck of a hard shot. Lie is, I've seen worse, but uh, you wouldn't call it good. Yeah, well, I don't know if we appreciate how great a performance this is. It's like. It's like running the last few laps at, in NASCAR with a flat tire. I mean, he's got a bad knee, and he's still got a shot at winning the United States Open. So I think we have to remember all these shots we're seeing him hit a little crooked. This is not the real Tiger Woods. This is gutting it out big time. a lot of guts to make a swing that could go 70 yards when you want it to go 30. But he'll come in there with a big backswing, a lot of wind up, and right at the bottom, he makes sure that face stays so open that it's sort of almost a glancing blow that's designed to come down softly. No one trusts their swing more in the big moments than that guy. 16. Jeff Ogilvy has this putt for a par three to remain at plus two. Pretty much straight up the hill, Gary. Not a lot of break to it. A little yeah, bit slow. Wants to eat to the right a little bit, Mark. It's hard to see. Yep, yep. Oh. I've seen it all day long. Oh, my God. <laughs> so Ogilvy now plus three with two holes remaining. That probably did it, huh, Gary? I would say that would eliminate him, yeah. Well, he could finish pretty eagle, though. Well, but the question is, will that be good enough? I think it has a shot, I can tell you that. Gary, I uh, talked to Rocco last night. Remember, he, well, we'll get to that story in a moment. Go back get to 15. Get over to Lee Westwood. Again, a chance to get to the one under number. How close is this to the fall line, uh, Roger? Uh, not too far off it, Johnny. It's a slow putt up across a ridge here. All right, double boxes. You've got Rocco for his par at 16. Birdie attempt for Westwood, lower right. Rocco yeah. is in. Stays at one under with a nice up and down. And Westwood will most likely stay at even par. What a great putt by Rocco. That probably looked like it was 20 feet, Gary. I'm sure it did, Johnny. And, uh, He's trying could... to stand that putter up. Did you see that? <laughs> you could see his reaction as he walked away from the hole, just kind of shaking a little bit and trying to breathe. Can a guy with the best attitude towards this championship win this thing? What a Cinderella story. 
huge story. Back in 15. <laughs> Rock with a chance to put his name on a U.S. Open trophy, but Tiger Woods has this putt for par. Guys with the name Rocco don't get on that trophy, do they? They just might. That's great. Well, this man would like to probably keep him off there, but this doesn't go down. Moves man right. named Rocco's got the lead by himself. This moves right, Roger. Yes, it does, John. Well, depending on the speed of the ball around the hole. Pretty quick. Going softly, it would break pretty good, I think. Um, yes, I would say it'd be uh, a little quicker than standard. It's slightly downhill from here, but not much. He's already two over par for the day. If he doesn't make this, that'll be three over. Drop him to level for the championship, level par. And again, he has never lost a lead, a 54 hole lead in a major championship. 13 and 0. something and kick left. It was breaking right into the center of the cup and it nicked something and kicked it left. And he is not happy about that. And we'll see that in a second, that little kick. It definitely, you watch about it. I'd say 18 inches from the hole after much is coming down here. Let's see if we can see this. It's going good there. It's starting to take its break right now. It's breaking right into the center of the hole and it hits something right there and goes left and then tries to break back, but it's too late. He's fallen out of the lead. Rocco is the sole leader. And Mediate is on the tee at 17. And he is going with the driver. 280 yards to the bunkers down the fair, uh, down the right hand side of the fairway bunkers. Give me a little. He's asking for it to kick a little left. It does. That is positioned nicely. Right center of the fairway. Back left hole location. Made birdie here yesterday. He's got the perfect draw for the last three holes. Mediate with the one shot lead over Tiger Woods and Lee Westwood. Interesting stuff, Johnny. It is. Rocco's got a good shot. Up at 18. Carlson for birdie to post plus two. Watch this putt. Might be the one that's needed later, not this particular player, but yeah. That is cut. Leader in the clubhouse from Sweden, Robert Carlson. Swedish male has never won a major championship. He's going to need some help from he's, the contenders coming home. He's a good looking player. Good player. MetLife Blimp, Snoopy 3, providing aerial coverage high on the brilliant blue of San Diego, California. Absolutely gorgeous. Marine layer didn't burn off until well, just about this time yesterday afternoon, but fully sunlit today for most of the day. Torrey Pines. A nice 36 hole facility. You've got a north course just above this. Those are the three principles right now. Carlson in with a lead at plus two, but mentioned how Rocco would be the oldest champion in the history of this event. Hale Irwin was 45 years old when he won at Medina. But Rocco would be <laughs> older. And it was Rocco who mentioned Raymond Floyd earlier in our telecast. If you missed it, he once heard those words from Raymond Floyd, who won that championship at Shinnecock, tell him, you've got to get it done when you know the opportunities aren't going to be around that much. In fact, Rock would be the oldest first time winner of any major. Currently, it's Jerry Barber, who was 45 when he won the 61 PGA at Olympia Field. So this is a long shot story in the making. Cinderella type for Rocco Mediate, who hasn't won in six years. And hopefully Rocco's not thinking of one thing you just said. <laughs> just try to keep it simple. Just knock it back up there. Get your 
par option birdie and not think about, oh man, this is going to change my life. Well, there's a couple of guys who could take it away from him at uh, 16 T. Lee Westwood will be playing first. Got the five iron out here, Gary. Wind coming against and feeling a little bit off the right. <laughs> Rod from the tee, it looks like they stuck the whole uh, location almost in the bunker. Can't see any part of the putting surface. It looks like they missed the green with it. From back. <laughs> exactly. Very small area. To try to go right at the flag. Hard to see it for the viewers, Gary, but sitting over here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, actually right at the very left edge of that circle. Oh, there you go. Now I can see it. Rocco mediate from 172 yards back left hole location should fit his shot shape very well walking after Johnny he likes it he likes it oh, man what a shot I'll tell you what he's handling the pressure <laughs> and loving it <laughs> he's the greatest man what an attitude let's see All right, back at 16. Can't be right. He's going to put some pressure on these guys, isn't he, Gary? Well, he is. If he were to make that putt up at 17, yes. Mm -hmm. If he makes that, he's in really good shape without even a birdie at 18. Who knows? Maybe he's going to finish 3 4. Well, Tiger was feeling wind at the tee and throwing up grass, and the wind was going straight right to left. He mentioned to Steve Williams, that can't be right. This is a five iron. Seventeenth, and Mark really? Rolfing, you're down there with Rocco, and you got a little uh, story on him. Well, walking up the fairway to his second shot, Gary, uh, he was chatting away as usual, and the fan yelled out, "Tiger just bogeyed." Rocco looked at me and said, "I could care less. I just want a birdie putt here." Well, he's got that, but it is a tricky one. He got a little help from Jeff Ogilvy that had a pitch shot from behind the green, Gary. That he had a very good one, and this thing goes very hard right at the end. And it is very quick. I've seen. Uh, Several players put the ball three or four feet by from this location. This to take a two shot lead. Got a chance. But look where it's gone. Look where it's gone. Back at 16. Westwood with the lengthy putt for birdie. Breaking left uphill here. Yeah, it actually goes back to the right at the end a little bit, Roger, and it is slow. Hard to read. Read. Get in. Get in. Oh, he had it read yeah, off a good line. Yeah, yeah. He did. He had it read perfectly. Oh, man. That would have been a good shot. Oh. All right, ahead at 17. and. Mark, I'm sure this was a little more than what he was anticipating. Boy, you got to think it's a nervous feeling now. This one he's going to have to be firm with, Gary. I think put it just sort of inside right or right edge and hit it firm. All right. Sneaks it in the right side. And the 
Fans love it as he'll go to 18 at minus one. We go back to 16 and Tiger with the flag stick out. Raj means one thing. He's thinking in. Gonna go to the right. It's got a lot of speed. Got a lot of speed to it. That's the one problem when you try to make chips, huh, guys? Is that sometimes you race them by. He just cannot afford another buggy. As Rocco moves to 18T. Pulled along by all of his fans. You know, I said several hours ago that this course was set up like it was done by Rocco because it's really been moved up the tees to 7280 which is about the same length as um, wing foot was. And what happened is this hole, it could be 573, is at 527. So all of a sudden, a guy like Rocco that hits a 275, this is a green lighter if he can get it in the fairway. And where, it, you know, it's just huge for him, the fact that the USGA decided to move up several tees and uh, just fit right into his bag. And it could be the reason why he wins this thing today if he does win. Back to 16. But for Tiger Woods to remain at even. Yeah, this kind of move a little left, doesn't it, here, Gary? Yeah, Ro uh, Roger, this one actually, if it's not struck firmly, it'll move a pretty good bit to the left. I've seen a number of players not play enough break from this position. Taking aim in the par five, easiest hole this week. Biggest tee shot of his life. <laughs> Might be overhooked. Overhooked, maybe. Just a little to the left. Layup. Rocco Mediate. Is he going to be the next U.S. Open champion? Tiger trails by one along with Westwood. Back at 17, Lee Westwood with a driver. And left. Just a bit. to come okay, left. Left. It's a good kick. It's Sit. gonna miss Sit. the. Drop. <coughs> well, sitting up. Okay. Not bad. Good angle. Careful. Back left hole location. Rocco Mediate in his favorite championship, the U.S. Open. Just drove it in the rough at the par five, 18th. Leader by one. Back to the tee at 17. And I think a crucial tee shot, Johnny. If he puts the ball in the fairway, it becomes a birdie hole. He's hit some good three woods, but he looked a little late, unless it's hooking. And I guess it is hooking. Yeah, the way he picked that tee up, I would think it is turning, and it is. Yeah, he played a little draw. That's yeah, a good shot. That's a good shot. Is he going to finish birdie, 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 folks, and mm -hmm. steal another one? Don't put it past him. Yep. I'd like to have 90, 100. 90 or 100. It's, it's eight or seven, really, isn't it? How far is the pin? The pin is six on, six on, six from the right. How's it going to come out of that lie? Um, what's the total again? Total is 246. Just hold. an eight iron. It's an eight iron. I like that. 246 for eight iron. Rock goes, sounds like he's playing a four ball with his buddies at home. <laughs> He's at the 72nd hole of the U.S. Open as a lead by one. He wants to hit this ball about 160 yards, I think. In the hole! In the man, Rocco! Yep. Came out very soft. That may be the yardage he wanted to get to. Rocco! I thought to do that. Up ahead to the green, Trahan for birdies coming off back-to-back -back bogeys, which dropped him to plus three. 
So that for plus two. He ties Robert Carlson for the lead in the clubhouse. Well, that gets him a piece of fourth, doesn't it? That's a good finish. For one of those young Americans, maybe poised for greater things to come in future majors. Back to 17. And Tiger walking up the fairway. We'll take a look at uh, the scorecard. And there's that horrendous start. Double at one, the bogey at two on a three putt. Nice birdie at nine. Great birdie at 11. And then the questionable second shot at 13 that led to a bogey. One for the green and two, and uh, certainly didn't have to. All right, Raj, how about the yardage here? Yeah, 185 here, one, Gary. 67. Uphill wind as it did yesterday, it's really kind of laying that down. Bridge in the race. Got to be committed to the flow. Yes, yes. The seven carry? Right there, yes. Not, it's not the pin that's. Yeah. The flag is actually in line with the bridge. Yeah. I mean, Carry the ball 170. Um, okay, 160. Yeah, up at 160 up here. Double check that wind here, Tiger. Yeah, it's definitely just straight across, isn't it? If it was 18, it'll be slightly in. Yeah. You got it. All right, quickly we'll go to 18. <coughs> Rocco stepping in quickly here. Third to the par five, whole location just over the water on the right. who backed away, I understand, Gary, at 17. Yes, he did indeed. Johnny, to me, this is when he is at his best. He seems to be able to slow himself down and just narrow the focus so much in these pressure situations. He was pretty far left, Gary. Very softly. Here comes Rocco. And this crowd appreciates an underdog, and boy, is he one. The 158th ranked player in the world coming up. Maybe is a U.S. Open champion. A lot to be decided, though. 17. Westwood second. Chase back there, Gary. Exactly. There's a ridge right through the center of the green. Oh, and that comes off short. And into the bunker. Might have got that a little high on the blade. Yeah, that's very surprising. Back up at 18. And since the rankings began back in 1986, no one outside the top 100 has ever won the U.S. Open. The lowest ranked player has been Steve Jones. Number 99 back in 96. That is how much of a long shot Rocco is. And even though he was positioned in the second to last group, Johnny, a lot of people had a lot of doubts that Rocco was going to be able to handle the heat here. He was awful amped up on that third shot, I think, Mark Rolfing. That's probably why he didn't have any intention of knocking it that far by, but I just think he was so excited he couldn't help himself. You know, there's no doubt about it, Johnny, and this is not an easy putt he's got here now. It reminds me a little bit of the situation that Davis Love the third was in at Oakland Hills when he was above that hole on the 72nd hole and really needed a two putt. Rocco has just looked over at the scoreboard, so I'm pretty sure he knows where he stands. On this Father's Day, Rocco spoke to his three sons this morning. 
And even though Rocco has admitted he has been nervous this week, his son said, don't be nervous, Dad. This is the best Father's Day ever already here in the second to last group at the U.S. Open. So play well and be yourself. He has said a number of times out here today, Dan, isn't this fun? You know, this doesn't break a ton, Mark. This is, a, this is the kind of punch you can make sometimes under pressure. You sort of get it started and just let the hill be your friend. They're looking about a foot, maybe 14 inches outside left. It really has the kind of the opposite persona you would expect out of a U.S. Open champion, a grinding type of player. Mediate at 18, 17. All right, Westwood's third from the bunker. Lie appears to be good, Roger. It is a perfect lie. He's hit some good bunker shots. He tends to land the ball short and let it release. But that's gotten up above the hole, and that's going to be a speedy one. Gary, Morocco's opened the door for these guys. Yeah, he certainly has. Uh, by not uh, hitting the fairway at 18 and having a good chance to make a birdie. And the miss putt here, not that it was a gimme by any means, but he could have closed the door on these two players and won the United States Open probably barring an eagle. Of course, Tiger can make this now. See that look on his face. You can see that energized look, Gary. Well, I'm sure he's been uh, listening and hasn't heard any big roars from up at 18. I bet he, I bet he could hear that. Oh, all the way from back here. All right, all that's left for Rocco to post one under. Went to Florida Southern, a Division II school, the Florida Southern Moccasins, which, by the way, already has a two-time U.S. Open champion and Lee Jansen, a very good friend of Rocco's. In fact, the first call to Rocco after Jansen won in 98 at Olympic. And then Rocco watched Jansen win at Baltus Roll in 93. And we know that Lee Jansen has stuck around here to cheer his good friend on. But will it be good enough? For another moccasin win. It's been four years since anyone has finished 72 holes in the United States Open under par. Done. He began the day two behind Tiger, and again, Tiger's never lost the 54 hole lead in the major. 17. And the birdie putt to get to one under par. I don't see much in this, Gary. Does it fall off shade left? Yeah, maybe just a touch, Rod. There is not much there. Totally regroup. Yeah, it's a shame. There's just a sea of cameras behind this screen, and some of them just kind of clicking away at random. Got any feelings, guys, about this? It will get it to the hole. I think he'll get it to the hole, Johnny. But uh, I have not seen anyone make it from this position on the green today. left. So Tiger Woods will make a par. It's a 71st hole. He will need to birdie 18 to tie. Rock was dodging bullets. Yes, he is. Or an eagle three. Could potentially win it. And by the way, Gary, no U.S. Open champion has ever eagled the 72nd hole hasn't been a lot of par fives just 
a few in the modern era to finish up with a par of five. Ball to straw, Pebble Beach. And this is a huge, huge putt for Lee Westwood. To put him in the same position yes, as Tiger. Absolutely. And this one, Raj, is not an easy one. Well, no, because you have to hit it so easily from behind the hole. There's, there's really nothing definitive. You don't really get a definitive break uh, when you read this putt. So it's, uh, it's a tough one. Very hard. Yesterday to seize that one shot lead after 54 hole lead in this major championship. In fact, that's the only other time he's made eagle here at Torrey, other than the first time he won the first of six PGA Tour titles here at Torrey. He eagled this hole to put that one away. So he has eagled a hole here at Torrey Pines to win a PGA Tour event. Can he do it in the U.S. Open? Well, first things first, <laughs> got to hit that fairway, Roger. Just needs to hit the fairway. One of these two players, you know, for Rocco to win this outright would be a minor miracle. But you remember what happened on the last par five, number 13, guys both hit it in the ice plant, uh, had to drop with a penalty. So, you know, he. That might have been the turning point of the championship for Rocco, and if he can dodge two uh, birdies here and, and win it outright, that'd be pretty lucky. Westwood shouldering England's hopes of having a U.S. Open champion for the first time in 38 years. But first things first, got to hit that little sliver of fairway. Got to get it into the fairway. Yeah. And it's coming off from the left from the ocean. Shot gonna miss right, I believe. It's moving out that way. Yeah, it missed it this time. Well, that goes dog to half a one now. I mean, he can birdie from there, but it takes the eagle out of it unless he holds his wedge shot on Roger. <laughs> this might well, be the bigger bullet to dodge right here. The guy with the red shirt on Sunday in a major. Well, let's see if he goes to that same shot he played here yesterday, John. That great big squeeze fade. Well, those practice swings aren't a squeeze fade. Those are a neutral down the middle rip like he hits on number nine that he's done so well. He's not practicing the open club face with the hold off fall through with the toe turns down a la Ben Hogan at Marion. Starts this ball well left and it's cutting, but it's not going to come back enough. It's going to miss left. Boy, and Rocco dodges another one. Middle of the bunker for Tiger. How's it going to end here at Torrey Pines? Rocco clinging to a one shot lead. We mentioned how close Rocco Mediate is to his uh, college teammate from Florida Southern, Lee Jansen, and there is the two-time U.S. Open champion waiting with Rocco to see if there's going to be another U.S. Open title for that Division II school. So a couple of birdies here trying to tie Mediate. Eagles by Woods or Westwood would win it, but what's the uh, proposition right now, Roger, out there? Well, you know, neither one of them has what I would term a perfect lie. Uh, Lee Westwood has 200 and 
227 yards to the one, or two, excuse me, 228. Tiger has 227, and it's just settled down enough in his that I think it would be questionable trying to hit a wood, certainly. You'd have to hit it perfect. You'd go chase it up on the one I do that. Well, on the tee, being this the easiest hole so on the golf course, the odds of these two the terrific players right not birdie in okay. were pretty yeah. slim yeah. and none. But now it's Ain't starting to get a little dodgy, Roger, with those tee shots, so whether they can do it. Yeah, good. That's certainly 75. play, John. I just, it would be putting too much on one swing and it would have to be absolutely perfect. Yeah, that lake and that shaved bank is just asking for Tiger to try it. Westwood now. What's he got there, Roger? What's he doing? Yeah, I believe he's laying up as well, Johnny. He yeah. can't be trying to go for it. No, I don't think so. He could, you know, he could do a one out of five, but maybe not the last hole of U.S. Open. Need birdie to tie. Needs a good layup. Shouldn't be any problem. Well struck, Roger. Yes, this will be fine. This is going down the left side of the fairway. I think it should stay in the fairway. Pretty good angle right there. Gotta come over the water, though. While we have a moment, let's go down to Mark Rolfing. All right, thank you, Dan. Rocco and I are standing here watching what's going on at 18. Rocco, what's going through your mind? I, that's all I got. <laughs> I, I left it all out. I'm all over the golf course out there. It was the most fun you could ever, I could ever have dreamed it would have been, and I, I held myself together somehow. It was what, dicey at times. What makes you the proudest about the way you played today? Just knowing who's behind me and paying attention to what was going on. I had some opportunities to get maybe a couple up there, and I just missed them. And, um, you know, I, I haven't been in this situation, well, I'm ever really this close ever in a major, so it was cool. cool to, I felt good. You know, I gave it a few hooks, which I tend to do at times. And, um, but I kept it together somehow, and I made some good putts coming in on 16 and 17. And, and the, the one on 18 was as scary as I had. It's only two feet. <laughs> was, there ever, was there ever a time out there where you were thinking about winning the U.S. Open? When I got, when I, when I, when I buried the second hole, I just said, just keep putting the ball in the fairway and the greens, and you could win this thing. And obviously, a few mistakes happened, and then all of a sudden you're trying to hold on, and I'm watching what they're doing, and no one went crazy, and Tiger started bad again, and no one, no one, he was coming back. I knew he wasn't out of it when he was two or three over par after three holes, so just try to keep doing your job. All that's, right, let's watch what's going to happen now. Let's see what happens. I, don't, I can't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Rocco, tell him it like it is. He's played in 43 major championships previously, has never won. Now, what about Tiger, Roger? Well, I, I don't know that I'd describe his lie as being in a divot, but there has been a Back shot played from here, and the grass disturbed. It is still like, down in a hole. That would be uh, uh, misstating it, but uh, it's, it, it could be worse, but it's going to be very hard to spin the ball with the hole cut in front. That's the issue. 99 yards he's got left. Excuse me, 105. Got to keep it about 10 feet right of the hole if he wants to get it close. A 
Can he hit it flush? Can he get the right distance, Roger? We'll see. Guys, remember last year at Oakmont, he needed birdie on the 18th and final hole to tie Cabrera. Makes a mighty rash out of it at the bottom. Can you get lucky and get the right distance? Look at this. Going to fall down that hill. That's a pretty darn good shot. He's going to need to make that as Rocco watched it. For the perfect 13 and 0, 54 hole record. And the major championship will be over. Don't check out of your hotel, Rocco. Now, Westwood in his third. This is a much easier shot, Roger. Yes, less than a full wedge here, Johnny. Only 74 yards. He's never been this nervous ever. Spin will spin it right down that bank into the lake if he doesn't carry it almost just short a hole high. This looks pretty good. Spins. Well, took a big first half. And it's just hard to hit it that smoothly when your nerves are so loud. Up. Comes down to a flat stick. And Tiger Woods involved in another dramatic conclusion to another major competition. And this crowd recognizing what he has been through this week. For a third knee surgery on the left knee, grimacing his way to perhaps forcing a playoff. And Lee Westwood at age 35, 27 wins worldwide, never a major title. And trying to win one for Europe and England as well. Two Final bullets here for Rocco Mediate to try to dodge. And Westwood's hung in there, one under par the last four holes to put himself in a chance to force a playoff tomorrow. So you got to hand it to him. He started playing the game 13 years old. His father, John, watching back home. Rocco watching on the monitor. Arnold Palmer back in Latrobe watching, hoping that his man, Rocco Mediate, can put away that elusive major. First time I've ever seen him not talking. Tiger Woods <laughs> on his first Father's Day as a father. <laughs> this has got a lot of left to right break, Roger. Yeah, this is a big sweeper from left to right and downhill. This is this, uh, certainly the harder of the two putts. Yeah, well, Tiger's putt is just going to move a little right, I think, but it's not that tough a putt considering this one. This one is really going to swing, and you got to get match your speed with the break, otherwise you miss. He looks up to his father so much and says that he has not had a coach for the last year and a half. He got away from all the technical things that were being told to him by various coaches. And he said really the only guy that's watched him, the only pair of eyes that watches him now is his father, who he started playing this game really at a late age, 13 years old. In contrast to Tiger, who pretty much came out of the womb with an iron in his hand. Well, this would be a pretty good Father's Day present for his dad, then. Absolutely. He's watching back in England. Eight or nine inches outside left.
going to come up short. One last bullet for Rocco Medi to try to avoid. Two over 73 for Westwood, who began the day one behind Tiger. Well, we've seen this set again for Tiger Woods in a major championship. Look at this. This is it doesn't get any more exciting for Rocco than this. It's like, oh my gosh, Tiger Woods to beat the timing. Rocco was so excited last night. It's so exciting, he said, to be a part of the major championship with Tiger involved. I don't think he could have imagined it would come down to Tiger with a putt to time and force an 18 hole playoff. Roger, is he just off the foul line where he'll move to the right a little? I, I mean, think, a little left, I mean. I think the very start of the putt, it moves a little left. It may straighten up around the area of the cup, but yeah. there's going to be a little left moving initially. I had it like one or two inches moving left, but it's hard to tell the angle. And Rocco trying to become the first player ever to track down Tiger Woods in a major championship when he's had the 54 hole lead. So you think it's outside the hole just a little bit? Roger? Just off the hole. Just off the hole if it has any speed. And fast. Unbelievable. I knew he'd make it. Yeah, I knew it. You got it. Beat him tomorrow. First playoff in the U.S. Open since Southern Hills back in 2001. And Tigers 54 hole. Way to go! streak has a chance to continue. But that's the highest score he's had ever when holding the final round lead in a major 73. Still he survives to a playoff. Let's go to Mark. Well, Rocco, <laughs> the man you just shook hands with and you have a tea time we tomorrow, got, tomorrow got, morning. In the morning sometime, I don't know when, but um, you can't ever expect them to miss. It's amazing. You and I were standing there talking. I said, it's not in your personality to root for a guy to miss a putt. No, Is no, that correct? No, absolutely, no. I did while I could, and you can't root against somebody. It just doesn't make sense to, and um, I was prepared for that to happen, so 
I did. I, I couldn't do anything else, I don't think, today. All right. If you couldn't do anything more today, what do you have to do well, tomorrow to win? Battle Royale. I mean, I got to play against the number one player on grass as far as playing golf. So we'll see. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now? Well, I guess I got to go to the press room for a while and yak, which I don't mind doing, and then probably rest. I'm tired. What time is it anyway? Remember, <laughs> it's I'm late. Old. I'm old. <laughs> so he, I got him by 15 years. So congratulations on a great day. Thank you. Thank Good you. Luck tomorrow. Thanks, Mark. Dan. All right, so Rocco is in his first playoff in a major, and he's got Tiger Woods. He's off to his third playoff in a major championship. You heard from Rocco. We will hear from Tiger Woods, who eagled 18 yesterday, a birdie to force a playoff today. Yep, he did. He had one more left in him. We'll hear from Tiger when we come back to Torrey Pines. An 18-hole playoff set to begin tomorrow between Tiger Woods, the top-ranked player in the world, and the 158th-ranked player in Rocco Mediate. Let's get a word with Tiger and Roger Malpe. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Tiger, great four at the last. Not the kind of four I envisioned you making. Oh, you think? <laughs> but the third shot, if you could, it looked to me like you hit it in an area where someone had played a shot. Not so yeah. much a divot, but it right. disturbed the grass there and it settled a little bit. A little bit. It looks like someone may have played there, someone to practice around or something, but uh, it wasn't that bad. Um, it felt like I could get uh, the club on it, and you know, we were kind of caught in between, right, right in between clubs. So we decided to go with a, a hard 60 and at least give us a chance um, instead of trying to play a 56 and bounce it in there. And it worked out. And the putt. Now it looked to us like maybe it would start breaking left a little bit from the start, straighten up a little around the hole. Is that close? Well, it was a little wobbly down there. You know, it was, uh, that, that, that guy was a little, uh, a little bouncy. So I was just kind of, I played probably about uh, two and a half balls outside the right. And I said just to stay committed to that and just make a pure stroke because you know, once it starts rolling down there, it's kind of like playing Plinko. You don't know what's going to happen. But uh, only I can control is my stroke. Now, I have to ask you about the knee. It seemed like it bothered you early on, and then it seemed like it didn't bother you as much as the round progressed. Different from other days. True or not true? Uh, true. Um, took some things to kind of relieve that. <laughs> and adrenaline, maybe? Uh, that helps, too. <laughs> All right. How do you think it'll hold up tomorrow, then? Uh, we'll see. Okay. You got Have it. a good night's Thanks, sleep. Buddy. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Dan. All right, Roger. We will see you tomorrow. The first nine holes come your way at noon Eastern time, 9 a.m. out here on the West Coast, and then we've got you back on NBC at 2 o'clock Eastern time for the final nine holes in the 18-hole playoff in the 108th U.S. Open. And for a full wrap-up of the day's events at this U.S. Open, which has been very interesting, watch the Lexus U.S. Open wrap-up show. It's live on NBCSports.com immediately following the conclusion of this telecast. And a reminder, coming up next, it's Saturday Night Live. Best of Mike Myers. For our entire NBC Sports announce team, I'm Dan Hicks saying so long from Torrey Pines for now, but we've got a playoff. And Tiger Woods has a chance for his 14th major and third U.S. Open championship against Rocco Mediate, the most intriguing matchup indeed. We'll see you tomorrow for that.